All right, would you give a call to order, please? Roll call. Roll call. Uh, Karen? Here. Carolyn? Here. Diane? Diane is frozen, but she's here. Diane, I always see Diane. Patty? Here. Linda? Here. Kim? Here. Do. Yeah. Here. Okay, great. I'm here. Try to pledge of allegiance. So I'm going to share my screen. Host that's disabled. Oh, uh, Susan, can you enable screen sharing? I did that earlier. I guess it's flipped back. Okie doke. Okay. All right. Can you see my screen? I can see you. Can't see my screen? Oh. Well, not a, no, not the flag. Oh, shoot. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I see you. What the heck? Got it. All right. Hold on, I gotta get this bigger. There we go. Nice, very nice. All right. All right. Okay. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag, of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Very nice. Uh, let's see. Stop share. All right, back. There you go. Okay, very nice. Okay, we have public comment. Uh, I re will remind the public that public comment portion of the meeting allows for members of the public to present their comments to the board. Each member of the public was allowed three minutes for their comment, and total time allowed for public comments of the meeting is limited to three minutes. Uh, this is an opportunity for comments only, not public debate, not committing questions to the board. Time their discretion, the executive director and our trustees may provide short responses or clarifications to comments presented to the private public. If a member of the public does have a question for the executive board or the board member, they may submit the question via email request to the library website, and the library staff member will be happy to help them through the process should they wish to do so. Very nice. Okay, we have one public comment. Susan? Uh, yeah. Hold on. Okay. I have muted everybody because we're getting feedback. We're still getting feedback. What is going on? I don't know. All right. This is a comment from Mr. Steve Gowdy. Newsletter or chapter one. Currently, the library is mailing six newsletters a year to the residents of Niles. Each publication cost $5,669 plus $2,400 for postage. That's an annual cost of about $48,414. Due to current times, wouldn't it be prudent to reduce the frequency to four newsletters a year and reduce the number of pages printed? Doing so could save taxpayers from $15,000 to $20,000. The library has been paying Culver School $881 a month for parking while the library has been closed and has no opening date. Why didn't the library contact Culver to negotiate a better deal for the taxpayer? At the May 20th, uh, uh, the library board approved temporary library cards free to all the families of Washington School District 63, May through September 2020. Per the school's website, the school have more than 300 students. Washington School is in Glenview and unincorporated and does not pay library taxes, and most of the homes in Glenview cost more than mine. It's nice to be charitable, but should it be at Niles taxpayers' expense? Times are tough for Niles residents, too. I think Glenview can afford to pay something. Board members, please amend this policy. Last year's budget was $6,659,562, then abated $1 million. Now Director Susan Lemke is asking the board to approve a budget of $5,800,000 for 2020-2021. The library has been closed for three months and has no opening date. Note, the library currently has over $12 million in general funds and special reserves. Maybe the board should reduce the budget by another million dollars. Um, Tim, you had said that we can correct anything or answer any questions. And so I will just um, clarify that um, 
Unincorporated people do pay taxes to the, to the library. We are the Niles Library District, not only for the residents of Niles, but there are about, I believe it was 78 families or 78 homes in unincorporated Maine Township that do not pay taxes. And those are the people that are getting the cards. So I just wanted to clarify that it's not all 300 families. Most of the families in, dis in uh, Washington School do already, are in, already entitled to library cards. That is the only written comment that I got. Tim, you've got to unmute. There you go. Nice. All right. <laughs> So uh, this uh, new business uh, review and discussion of the 2020-21 budget, uh, proposed budget. Our uh, purpose of tonight's uh, meeting is oh, to- Oh, hold on, Tim. I see that uh, Steve Yassel has his hands up. He would hand up. He would actually also like to make a comment. Sorry, I didn't see that right away. I already started my purpose of tonight's meeting. Come on, Steve. Jeez. Go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi, good evening, board. Um, just wanted to make it real quick tonight. Um, I wanted to address a topic of reference books and um, the uh, going forward with reopening the library. Um, I'm a little concerned with uh, the recent goings on around the country with um, possibly uh, destroying history and I know we have a lot of valuable reference books in the library and I would just uh, I guess like to see something a little bit more with security with our reference book section I know it's well taken care of at the moment but um, maybe a few more guidelines as to um, who looks at reference books or if you're monitored by a librarian um, I think that would be a very good step forward because I don't want to see um, any library property destroyed, like pages being ripped out if people disagree with them. And um, that, that's um, just been on my mind lately. And um, I've been liking what all of you have been doing with the meetings uh, for the most part. And I'm looking forward to hearing tonight about the budget. But um, I hope you all are doing well. And... Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much, Steve. Okay, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to review the proposed budget uh, for the upcoming fiscal year, make modifications upon board agreement, approve, and approve the budget. Hopefully, you have all reviewed the excellent budget analysis that Susan, Greg, and the library staff created and included in your board packet. Uh, you, hopefully, you noticed on page four that this document received the distinguished Budget Presentation Award from the Government Finance Offers Association. Congratulations to Susan and Greg for that. Uh, we will be following procedures for our board discussion in that we will review section by section, allowing each board member to comment in turn. If any trustee wishes to make a change to the proposed budget, please make a motion so that it'll be seconded and voted on in according to our normal procedures. Uh, the board previously discussed, voted on, and accepted the process by which the proposed budget is created by the executive director and the staff of the library. Therefore, uh, there's no really further any need for questioning or analysis of the methodology used to determine the proposed budget. Now, I will be limiting questions in that area. So, with further ado, uh, we can start. Oh, Greg, uh, yes, uh, we can start with a presentation by Greg and Susan of our uh, the proposed budget and the many changes they made since the previous fiscal year. Um, I just, uh, I do want to make one announcement that um, we had something very special happen this week um, that actually does have a tiny impact on the budget. I see that Sue already knows what it is. Um, our PR, wonderful PR and marketing department won a national award called the John Cotton Dana Award for their uh, library card campaign last year. It is sponsored by EBSCO, and it comes with a prize of ten thousand dollars. Congratulations! Congratulations! 
So I thought I would start a budget wow. discussion off with a piece of really, really positive news. We are super proud of them. It's Good a huge achievement. Normally there would be a big presentation ceremony and everything, sure. and we're not quite sure how that's going to work out this year, but sure. I wanted to start out with that. And uh, then I will, and then of course that together with the uh, prize, that, the award that Greg got is really wonderful. And then one of our catalogers also has just recently achieved a really high status in the Library of Congress world of catalogers. So we have some good news, but I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Greg because I know he has a lot to cover tonight. Thanks, Susan. Um, give me a moment so I can uh, share my screen with everybody. Okay, you should be looking at uh, the cover page of the presentation. Everybody see it? Yes. Great. Okay, so uh, before I get started, um, you know, I want to talk a little bit about the process that we went through. Um, it's outlined um, more fully on page nine of the 2020-2021 uh, budget document. Um, but overall, um, in Greg, Greg, could you speak up a little bit? Sometimes uh, your voice is dropping a little low, if mm -hmm. you wouldn't mind. Okay. So let me get a little closer. Is that a little better? Okay. So um, what I started to say was, um, in, sh in brief, what Susan and I did was uh, we got together with the staff and we looked at current and future use of the materials, the programs, and the facilities uh, and compared that to the historical use of those areas. And using information available to us about reopening uh, Illinois and Niles, uh, et cetera, um, what we did was, um, we, and, and incorporating the opinions of the staff, along with our opinions, we created a proposed budget to reflect the changes in usage, pass, uh, usage patterns of the library. So, you know, in, I mean, it's basically what a budgeting process is, is to try to look into the future. It's really been hard this time because of the uncertainty surrounding everything. Uh, there's two levels of uncertainty. One is how are we going to move through the phasing that uh, Governor Pritzker has uh, put out and uh, the, the village of Niles is using and everybody is using to allow people back into the library and open up services. And then the second uh, big uncertainty is whether or not there'll be a, a surge of uh, coronavirus in the fall and how that might further impact um, operations. So, uh, so with that said, um, we're on the um, second page of the presentation, the Distinguished Budget Award. I, I can't help but put that in on something like this. I want to stress that this, um, this is for last year and um, uh, not for this year. So we'll submit again for this year and see if we can, uh, you know, repeat the, uh, the success. So uh, we start with some important planning thoughts. This is actually page five of the um, of the budget document. I'm not asking you to read it, it's kind of small, but I did pull out some uh, things specifically. Uh, the first thing um, on page five is that the reopening plan includes reduced hours initially being open from 9 a.m. to 7, uh, 7 p.m. from uh, Monday through uh, Thursday, uh, I'm sorry, Monday through Friday and uh, Saturday closing at 7 p.m. Uh, I must it's, it's not there's something wrong there anyway it's it's Monday through uh, through Friday uh, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, and uh, only closing uh, closing at 5 p.m. on Saturday uh, and these reduced hours uh, represent a reduction in open hours of 18 percent so uh, normally we're open uh, se uh, 70 hours a week, and now we're open, open less than 70 hours a week, 18% less. Also uh, on that page is, um, you know, our, a little bit about our concerns um, about um, uh, opening up with uh, COVID cleaning services, and we've allocated about $50,000 in the budget uh, beyond the normal uh, expenses that we see with special expenses for uh, for COVID cleaning and COVID personal protective equipment. Um, it's not a commitment to spend it, but a recognition that we do have to provide that 
PPE to our employees and should we have an infection in the building, we need to address it. Um, we've also um, altered our procedures to take into account the recommendations of RAILS, CCS, and other organizations in terms of the way that the virus lives on different materials and the way that the viruses can be possibly transmitted off of those materials. So um, because the, you know, the pandemic, which really started for us in um, uh, March of this year, uh, because of that, um, we've had to basically stop any work on any of the capital improvements that were in progress at the time, including uh, replacing the roof, um, improving our internal uh, signage, updating our staff intranet, and updating the library website and expanding our community engagement. So since we stopped them for the current fiscal year, we've uh, put those items into the uh, budget that we're talking about this evening. Uh, next is a point about the bi-monthly newsletter. Again, we had planned a survey, uh, survey the uh, patrons in the June timeframe to determine if it's helpful and if we should go on with this format. But uh, the, you know, the April, we had an April special edition and then we had the May short edition. And it's, you know, it would be very confusing at this point in time to, uh, to go ahead and uh, try to get people to opine on whether or not this is helpful or not because it's such drastically changed, so drastically changed. So uh, the print line uh, carries another uh, $10,000 in addition to the four regular newsletters that we put out uh, in order to account for that for the, for the year going forward. On page six, uh, we talk about how the budget is affected um, you know, by some of the uh, actions and some of the planning items that we just addressed. Um, revenue will be down 13.6%, primarily due to a million dollar uh, property tax rebate that was adopted in May. Uh, we've also factored in the elimination of fines uh, adopted by the board, as well as reductions in investment income, passport fees, and, and other service fees uh, due to the corona impact. Uh, salaries are also down. They're down uh, by a total of 11.9%. Uh, this is due to reduced operating hours of the library and the expectation uh, that we'll experience some attrition as we move forward. Um, our plan is to only replace uh, employees that are critical to the operation. So if you have, if we lose a person and we have another person who is being underutilized in another department, we'll We'll make those adjustments on, on the fly to make sure that all the patrons are being served appropriately uh, as best we can. Going forward, um, as we get up to normal uh, operations, call it normal pre-COVID operations, um, you know, we'll, um, uh, we'll probably look to replace those people in their entirety and increase the staffing in order to serve the patrons once again. Uh, we've also eliminated the Sunday pay premium beginning uh, July 1st. And um, all of these decreases are slightly offset by a cost of living adjustment for the employees on January 1st. We had initially went, come to the board and said we'd like a 3.3 raise program, 3.3% uh, raise program consisting of 2.3% of cost of living and 1% of merit. And um, for this draft of the budget, we've gotten rid of the merit and we've just done a single 2.3% increase as of uh, January 1st, 2021, which means that the total impact is about 1.15%. Uh, along with the reduction of uh, salaries, we expect to see a reduction in social security taxes. It only makes sense. Um, we've also reduced material purchases by 9.2%, which uh, reflects a decrease in traditional print offset by an increase in uh, downloadables such as ebooks and online databases. Uh, library, op library operating expenses have decreased 10.6%. You know, we've uh, brought down uh, programming expenses, software, and uh, printing uh, expense overall. General and operating expenses have uh, decreased by 44%. Uh, 
Uh, there were significant decreases in um, uh, professional development of about 65%, uh, promotional expense about 52%. And then this is where we see um, the COVID uh, PPE start to uh, offset things. We, had, we put $30,000 into this uh, category of expense in order to account for gloves and masks and um, 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 uh, shields and uh, aprons in order to uh, fully protect our employees as they handle uh, materials. Um, capital spending plan reflects some uh, significant costs, uh, such as the roof replacement and the, elect uh, the electronic entry system um, to improve door security, replacement of the phone system, and uh, then we also uh, anticipate replacing some of the older automated uh, materials handling systems. So uh, this, this page is not in, in, the, uh, in the budget book. This is a, I'm sorry, this page is in the budget book. Uh, let me refer you to uh, uh, page 14. Um, this shows uh, a comparative on the, uh, on the revenues. So if you notice um, in the gray uh, column, the uh, revenues are uh, uh, down about uh, $900,000 or so in, uh, in total. Property taxes are down about uh, $860,000. Why not a million? Because um, if you remember, in November, the board passed a uh, levy that included a 2.3, I'm sorry, 1.9% increase, which was allowed under PTEL. And uh, then we took a million dollars off of that. So the net is down about $840,000. Um, replacement taxes, um, the state determines that. So, you know, we, we, we've received about $145,000 so far this year, and I, I thought that that would continue. Grant revenue, uh, we've received uh, 71605 um, in a pledge from the uh, uh, state librarian, and it looks like we're going to get $8,000 from uh, I can't remember, Susan, age uh, options. Age, age options. Yeah, we don't know that we're getting that, but we're, they have indicated that they'd be, they're, they're encouraging people to apply. Okay. Uh, investment income is, is, uh, is way down uh, because obviously money has become uh, cheaper. Uh, lost books are about the same. Pay for print because we're not open. Um, and the, the, uh, uh, copiers and the printers aren't as accessible as they normally are. We cut that in half. Uh, passport re uh, revenue, we cut that in half uh, for the same reason uh, as we did uh, book sale. If you uh, direct your attention to uh, the middle of the page and look at fines, fines are zero. Uh, they were $25,000 last year. I want to remind the board uh, that we became fine-free as of uh, April 1st. So uh, a different way of looking at revenue in terms of sources, um, it's the same old story. We get 95% of our revenue from property taxes. Uh, and then next on the list is uh, replacement taxes and then everything else is 1% or less. So um, without property taxes, um, we don't have a library essentially. Um, the village uh, on the other hand, uh, their levy is about the same size as ours, maybe a little bit smaller. Uh, but they do have a tremendous uh, advantage because they have uh, sales tax, which funds a tremendous amount of, uh, of their operations. They also have opportunity for uh, more federal and state uh, funding than, um, uh, than, than we do. So just a comparison. Uh, to give you some context on uh, property taxes, um, this, this curve is the um, is a graph of uh, the property tax extension. So when we do a levy, what the county does is it basically adds 3% for bad debts, essentially. And, um, and that's called the extension. So you can see that, you know, in uh, 2008 through 2000, uh, 2011, um, it, it got up, you know, like in the uh, 7 million, 7, 7, 750 range. And 
we got down to about 6 million one in 2014, uh, kind of normalized at around 7 million uh, from 15 to 18. And now for 19, we're back down to uh, about 6.1 million. The uh, property tax levy was abated, of course. We, uh, you all remember that. And uh, the, effect, the effect of the abatement is to reduce the second installment, uh, which has now been delayed 60 days in effect because uh, of the uh, no interest uh, pledge uh, if you're 60 days late. So we should be looking for, for the bulk of our uh, second installment in October. Um, here's a list of all of the uh, service-based revenues that were down. Uh, that were down. Um, of course, you know it's a best guess, and we, you know, we don't know exactly what our reopening ramp-up is going to look like. So, you know, this this may um, come to fruition or it may not. Um, investment income is down. Um, as of April 30th this year, we recorded over 200,000 based on the investments that that we do have, which are CDs and treasuries, uh, we expect the total for the year to be about 225000 But interest rates have dropped precipitously. If you look at treasury rates, for example, uh, right now they're 0.12% uh, for one year, 035 for five years. And in August of 2019, which was the information I had handily available, um, uh, it was almost 2% for one year and 1.5% for five years, which seems a little, um, which seems a little crazy, but essentially uh, there was the, this was an inverted treasury curve where the longer you went out, the less you earned, uh, but things have kind of normalized on that. Uh, on page 15 of the budget report that we handed out um, is uh, this chart, which uh, outlines all of the operating expenses you can see the uh, gray bar is this year, it's 5.838 um, million, uh, which is down from uh, the previous uh, budget of 6.445, roughly $600,000 uh, or so. Uh, this is where the money goes, a little different look of, uh, at the previous page. 53% um, of it goes to salaries uh, along with, um, uh, employee fringe benefits of uh, 12% um, and some other smaller items, social security taxes and so forth, uh, which uh, is about 70% of our total spend goes to salary and wages. Um, as I was saying, salaries are the biggest cost by far. And since we're a service organization, that makes sense. Uh, we have people to provide services to customers, the patrons. And this chart uh, shows how many paid hours that we had uh, from 2011 all the way through what we're planning for uh, this upcoming budget year. So we were, you know, in the 147, 148 range. Uh, we dropped uh, drastically uh, during the uh, uh, renovation, uh, plus uh, uh, some uh, pressure to not hire for a period of time. Uh, you know, when we reopened and got back to a normal footing and then added uh, digital services, uh, we ended up uh, kind of settling at around 145,000 hours or a little bit less. And this year's budget is just above 120,000 hours. So uh, we try to budget our salaries based on need. We consider the architecture of the library. There are four floors and seven uh, service points uh, that need to be staffed when, when we're open. Uh, today, they're being staffed uh, virtually through, uh, through telephone and chat and so forth. Uh, patron demand for services is another drive, driver for staffing, such as you know, the maker activities and the uh, better technology support through the uh, creation of the digital services department. And then um, this year, uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic just created all sorts of uncertainty. And this is not something, this is not the last time I'll mention this, 
But, you know, the natural questions are, how long before the library is completely open? Not open, we're kind of open now, but completely open to, pre, you know, to a pre-COVID uh, footing. And uh, at what point does uh, the library reopen, you know, partial services and access? And Susan and her team have been doing a lot of work on that. Um, for 20, uh, 20, 2021, we're assuming um, that operating hours will likely uh, be uh, reduced by 18% on, for the first six months of the year. So if you take that and average it, what you're looking at is about 9% for the entire year. Um, for 2021, we've also eliminated Sunday overtime pay. For 2021, we're assuming will not replace department um, departed employees uh, unless we cannot fill backfill from another department or it's a key position um, you know that you know like for example if we lost a supervisor of a department or something and we couldn't find somebody internally we need somebody to run that department to provide those services so you know in terms of attrition we've estimated the impact to be at about five percent uh, overall, we're estimating that we'll need 121,000 hours or 62.2 full-time equivalents, which is down from 144,000 hours and just short of 74 full-time equivalents uh, in last year's budget. So, you know, what we're, uh, what we're expecting is a reduction of approximately 12 uh, full-time equivalents or uh, approximately 24,000 hours. Um, from time to time uh, at board meetings, we talk about, you know, what makes up total compensation. So I, I have a, a brief uh, series of slides here. This again is, is uh, an excerpt from uh, page 15 of the, of the budget report. Um, so you have to add up a few things to get total comp. The first thing obviously is salaries for just over $3 million. The second thing is employee fringe benefits for about 700,000, social security taxes, which are also a form of compensation, $228,000 approximately, workers' compensation, which is in the budget for $25,000, and unemployment compensation, uh, which has been budgeted for about $20,000 for an overall uh, uh, spend on compensation for just over $4 million. Um, if you look at that and compare it to the total operating expenses, the relationship is 69.8%. So um, a little more than uh, two thirds of our budget is, uh, is based on compensation for employees and providing services to patrons. Um, so as we saw from the last chart, there's about, there's, there are three types of compensation. We got salaries, we got fringe benefits, and then we have taxes and insurance, which are really statutory. Everybody pays them. All employ employers pay workers' comp. All employers pay Social Security. All employers pay unemployment. Uh, and uh, that's true across the board unless there's some type of special pension plan, such as the teacher's retirement system, which, um, which doesn't supplement uh, Social Security. It supplants it. So they pay that instead of Social Security. Um, salaries by far are the biggest part of uh, compensation. Uh, each year the board approves a raise program. The target's been 3%, as we all know. Uh, for 2021, uh, we're seeking approval for 2.3% or, or for a total impact of 1.15% on the total salary line. Uh, periodically, uh, the board uh, approves a new salary schedule, which takes the change in uh, the consumer price index into account, and this shifts the salary ranges uh, as CPI changes. Um, and we also check our salaries against uh, uh, other libraries that look an awful lot like, uh, like this library. Um, in our peer group, uh, library employees are at or below the average in nearly all categories according to the 2019 Lacona survey. And the peer group that we're using is consistent with the 2015 matrix study. Uh, and by the way, in that study, we, um, all of our salary midpoints were at or below the average of our peer libraries at that point too. 
So uh, the, the six libraries in that peer group are Algonquin, Des Plaines, Fountaindale, Indian Trails, Skokie, and St. Charles. Um, we've also delayed uh, filling open positions this year until the library is fully open and there's a proven need. We have, um, we have uh, uh, two full-time employee, two full-time positions and two part-time positions, which are not uh, being filled at this point. And then uh, what follows is a historical look at salary. So you can see from uh, the 11-12 uh, fiscal year, and then it, it's climbing, and then we uh, then we decrease uh, again because of the uh, uh, renovation and the hiring freeze that was on during that period of time. Uh, I might also mention that's that's when we had our uh, retirement incentive plan, and, and five employees uh, decided to take it. So that also had a depressing impact on the amount of wages uh, that were paid. Uh, and then you see a slight recovery. The on uh, and then the uh, buildup of digital services in part, uh, as well as normal raise increases. And then we kind of flatten out at about the three and a half million uh, level. And for the current budget year that we're talking about tonight, we dropped to about 3.1, just under 3.1 million. So um, the third part of compensation is fringe benefits. Um, we got two types of uh, fringe benefits. We have the pension through IMRF and then health insurance, which basically includes um, five parts. Uh, let's talk a little bit about IMRF first. You know, that we passed, the board passed or adopted Ordinance 1606 in uh, 2016. Um, at the time, the library was providing payments to what was considered to be a non-qualified retirement scheme through ICMA. Um, I don't use the word plan here because, um, you know, plan has a specific meaning in the Internal Revenue Code, but it was a, um, it was a loose plan to try to get people to save by increasing their salary and hoping that they would put that money into a 401k type of um, uh, vehicle. Um, every year, these payments amounted to about $185,000. Uh, the qualified employees of the, of the library, once we went to IMRF, we had an opportunity to buy past service, and many uh, of the employees bought it, which led to an unfunded uh, pension liability of two and a half million dollars. And we paid uh, that uh, in two installments uh, in 2016-17 and 2017-18. Um, and the benefit of making these payments was that we uh, were able to avoid interest uh, uh, to the tune of uh, three and a half million dollars. Um, because if you owe, an, if you have an unfunded pension liabil liability and you owe, you pay it off like you pay off a mortgage over uh, almost 30 years, over 28 years, and then the interest rate is seven and a half percent. So it was a great thing to avoid paying that interest because it lowered our overall contribution to 5.3% uh, as a result. Um, organizations in similar uh, circumstances have contribution rates much higher, 13.5% is not uncommon. Um, and because of this differential, the library avoids approximately $200,000 a year in operating costs. Of course, like a mortgage, you pay a lot of interest in the beginning and then going forward, it tapers off as you start to pay down more principal. Um, it's the way amortization works. Uh, at, the, at the current contribution rate, um, we're planning for an IMRF contribution of a little over $160,000, which is still below the old unqualified uh, scheme. So uh, this is a look at all of the uh, all of the fringe benefits that we pay, you could see that uh, in 2021, uh, we're down 13, almost $14,000. Um, you know, uh, a lot of this stuff, uh, we budget pretty much levelly because it's hard to tell what the usage is gonna be. We just don't have the actuarial uh, know-how or information uh, in order to determine usage. Um, uh, uh, the health reimbursement uh, account is something that is 
done on an on-demand basis. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, the dental was a self-insured plan. Um, and then uh, vision and life and, dis life and disability are uh, contracts that, uh, that we have with third parties. So if you look at um, you know, the list of fringe benefits, those five accounts from group health down to life and uh, disability are what actually makes up the health insurance uh, portion uh, or health and wellness portion, I guess. Um, and if you uh, remove IMRF, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, if you remove IMRF, uh, you, you have about 76% of the library's fringe benefits left, which is, uh, you know, which is uh, our health insurance. And the main driver, you know, the, the big fish in the pond is the group health insurance with uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the health insurance plan structure for the library. It has two pieces, uh, primarily one is Blue Cross Blue Shield and the other is what's called an HRA, a health reimbursement account. And uh, the insurance contract is a PPO uh, with a 2,500 deductible for single and it's twice that for um, employee and children, employee and spouse, employee and family, so $5,000. and um, uh, the HRA pays for part of the deductible, uh, 1,650 for single and 3,300 for, uh, for the other categories um, uh, after the covered employee pays the first $500. So when you take these two things and combine them, uh, what you have is something that looks like an insurance plan with a $500 deductible, okay? Um, because we have this structure, it saves us uh, approximately $60,000 a year uh, when you look at current pricing for a plan with a $500 deductible, if that makes sense. So um, Blue Cross Blue Shield has a plan with a $500 deductible that for all intents and purposes kind of looks like our plan as we have it constructed, but in order for us to enroll in that and get rid of the HRA, it would cost an additional $60,000 a year. Um, also, our plan uh, that we currently have is considered a grandfathered plan. And simply stated, Blue Cross Blue Shield doesn't offer this plan any longer. They just don't have this plan on their lineup. And it's because they've you know, decided to formulate new products or whatever the case is. But as long as we stay in this plan, we could take advantage of some savings. Um, in this case, if the library was to buy a similarly constructed plan and give up the grandfathered status, it would cost us an additional $30,000 a year. So if we got as close as we could to this plan, it would probably be another $30,000 or so. Um, the way that insurance is priced, uh, they look at the community first. Uh, that's called community rating. We've talked a little bit about this in the past. And they use this to establish a base, co uh, a base cost, essentially. The other factors they consider, uh, the average age of the library census. The library census are all the employees, all the lives that um, would be covered under this insurance contract. Um, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, Susan, but we're all old. And uh, uh, so if you have an older census, uh, statistically, you're more likely to use the health system more often. Um, then they also look at open cases, which are continuing to accumulate costs. The uh, price of insurance reflects the risk of paying out additional monies on, on, these, uh, on these cases. So, um, you know, you're never going to get one over on the insurance companies. They're going to catch you in one way, shape, or form through uh, some sort of experience modification or age modification or something else in order to keep themselves whole and keep their shareholders happy. So what do you do to control costs? You know, first, we limit the number of employees who are eligible for coverage. We 
Uh, we hire in a way that creates a two to one ratio between part-time and full-time employees. For every full-time employee, there are usually two part-time employees. Second, um, the, the board has created incentives for employees to retire. In 2014, uh, the board passed the retirement incentive plan and five employees uh, retired as a result of that. Um, in uh, 2016, um, the board voted to implement IMRF. How does that have anything to do with it? Well, if you're providing a safety net for employees, they look, uh, as they approach re retirement age, they look more seriously at retirement, and then they decide whether or not they're going to make that jump. And I think more people are making that jump because of the, of the safety net that IRRF provides and, um, uh, and makes room for uh, replacements who generally are earlier in their career because you don't want, well, I won't talk about hiring practices. Um, the third thing that we do is we take the, market, we take the plan to market periodically. Uh, the last time we did that was 2015. Uh, initially, uh, we found what looked like some very competitive rates, far below the rates that we were paying. But there's always a hook in, uh, in that shiny object. And the hook is that it's their initial rate subject to change as a result of underwriting. So if you have an employee who, is, who has uh, um, a heart issue or there's, you know, they're fighting cancer or they have you know, something that, you know, that they're dealing with day in, day out and, and undergoing expensive treatment and drug therapy, uh, that all comes to light because each employee fills out uh, basically a health survey. And when they come back with you uh, with their adjusted price, as they did in this exercise, they were, they were way above, not even close, way above what Blue, Cro Blue Cross Blue Shield was uh, pitching us for that particular year. So, um, you know, I, I would recommend that we uh, take it to market again, just to see. Um, you know, it, it's not something I think we should do every year, but something that we should do periodically. Oh, skip one. So, this chart shows our fringe benefits over the, uh, the last 10 years. And that includes all six accounts that I showed you earlier from the pension scheme, I should say the ICMA scheme that we had in place, to uh, uh, the health insurance, to the HRA, to the vision, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see that, you know, we had some fits and starts here in the early part of the chart in the first uh, four to five years. And then we had this big spike. And what this big spike is called is the Affordable Care Act. And when, we, when we were phased in to the Affordable Care Act, um, insurance companies didn't really understand what was coming down the pike at them. And what they did was they, um, they priced, I would say they overpriced to a great degree. And this spike right here, I believe is uh, $845,000 or so. And then you could see over time, over the last five years, we've been able to you know, create a downward sloping curve. So, um, you know, that we're, you know, below the 750 uh, line at about $710,000. Um, and that's due to a number of factors as we've just been discussing. So leaving fringe benefits behind, uh, we'll go on to operating expenses. Operating expenses are down by $50,823. This class of expenses is directly for the benefit of library patrons. So CCS, for example, is the consortium that the library belongs to that supplies us with our uh, ILS so that uh, patrons can look up books and place holds and, you know, and do other operations uh, uh, throughout, uh, you know, throughout the library. If we look at some of these accounts, um, we recognize that we have little or no ability to adjust these expenditure types. CCS is one of them. If we belong to the consortium, then uh, we have to pay what the consortium uh, allocates to us. 
our alternative is to withdraw from the consortium and uh, buy the infrastructure and the uh, uh, database administrators and the skills in order to basically run our own installation and pay our own licensing fees, which um, we've looked at from time to time and they're consistently way above the $93,000 that you see in the budget. Um, internet charges is another thing. Uh, we have to have internet for patrons. We have to have internet for our operations. Um, the, the grant expenditures, the grant expenditures are driven by the amount of money that you get from the grant. If you get $71,605 from the state of Illinois, you are obligated to spend $71,605 uh, before the next end of the next fiscal year, uh, the same with you know the same with the age options grant of eight thousand dollars. So, all of those expenses that are difficult to uh, influence, they add up to about seventy two percent of the library operating expense category, or seventy one point eight percent. We do see software licenses that are down a little bit. Uh, this year, and that's because we have software that's renewable annually, and we have software that's renew renewable uh, over a multi-year period, mostly two years, sometimes three. What we're left with is um, is 145. I'm sorry, 120,000, um, which we did reduce. We reduced it by 17.1 percent to $24,000. Um, we uh, re reduced it in two areas. We reduced it in programming. Um, uh, that's not to say we're not doing programming, but we looked at programming to see what could be rolled into an online platform and still delivered to the patrons uh, so they could have uh, the experience that they've come to enjoy from the library. We reduced that spend by 15.5%. Um, the printing line still contains six newsletters, uh, but materials for in-person programs have, uh, have been reduced and that overall spend was reduced by uh, 21%. Going on to general, administra general and administrative charges, they're down as well. Um, these, this class of expenses deals with what I call back office items, items which indirectly benefit the patrons, but are more like support type expenses. So you have like bank fees in here and, and things of that nature. Uh, these items, uh, you know, copiers, telephone, service fees, and parking lease are um, are items where we have uh, little to no ability to adjust uh, the certain expense types. So if we look at those, um, you know, we, you know, we can see that they represent 24% of the uh, total category. If we look at um, the remaining uh, items, uh, we can see that professional development was cut by 65%. Um, you know, employees just aren't going to be traveling for conferences uh, as they have in the past. Um, we see promotional expense uh, down by 51.9%. Those are expenses where we have uh, maybe the logo of the library and a message about reading on it that we'll hand out at the 4th of July parade, which has been canceled, for example. Um, uh, and then we had uh, a new category uh, called COVID supplies, which we added for $30,000. So this is the PPE that I was talking about earlier. Um, these expenses, uh, this expense category was reduced by 20.5% before you consider the addition of the COVID supplies, if that makes sense. So if you take out this $30,000, you know, um, you know, this was reduced forty-one thousand uh, dollars from uh, the prior year's expenses, or about twenty point five percent. In building and maintenance, um, you know, these expenses pay for the build, you know, the maintenance and cleaning um, of the building and the equipment, uh, and they're down uh, due to a reduction in furniture and fixtures, which again is offset 
by a new category for COVID cleaning. The idea about COVID cleaning is if we have a, um, a live case in the, uh, in the building, uh, what we will likely do is do some contact tracing, uh, shut down the uh, relevant areas of the library and deep clean them before we reopen. Um, so uh, we thought we would we would add a number in here to try to account for that. Uh, and I, Susan and I, have heard prices uh, all over the place for uh, you know for different things. I think that companies that do this are still trying to figure it out. Special reserve expenses are down. Uh, they're down 15.9%. Uh, uh, again, special reserve expenses is a category for large scale repairs to the building and equipment in the library. So if we buy a fleet of computers or if we uh, put a new roof on the library, this is where you'll find those expenses. Um, and then uh, this listing is, uh, is in your uh, budget book. It's uh, before the appendixes. I think it might be the last page before the appendix, append appendices. Um, and it uh, identifies the, uh, yeah, it's on page 43. Uh, it identifies the uh, projects that, uh, you know, that we'd like to pursue this year. So in summary, um, you know, the, uh, the budget contains significant uncertainty. Due to how the library will ramp up to full pre-COVID levels, uh, due to whether or not there'll be a COVID surge in the fall and how we will respond to it. Uh, the total budget is just under $7.5 million, which is down 12.3% from the previous year. Uh, the operating budget though, the day-to-day -day operations of, uh, of the services that we provide to the patrons is uh, $5.8 million, which is down 10.3%. Um, this is a 10-year look back at the historical budget trend. Um, what I find interesting is if you look at, uh, if you look at this period uh, right here, which is the total budget, um, in this area from uh, uh, 2011 to 2014, uh, we see uh, huge expenditures many times uh, what we spent on the renovation. This is when the renovation happened. And it, it kind of gives you an idea of the, uh, the types of uncertainty we face as we try to budget exactly the timing of a large project and when those expenditures will happen. Um, what you can do is take this information that we just talked about and apply it here where we have a spike to, um, I believe this was a million nine hundred and seventy-one thousand, and that included the uh, roof uh, for last year's budget. This year, it's about a million six or or so of capital expenditures, which uh, also includes the roof. So we're not buying a roof each year back to back. We're buying at some point a roof, and we'll spend a sum of money one time on it. The other interesting thing here is if you look at this line, this blue line, that's the operating uh, expenditures of the library. Um, for all intents and purposes, it's pretty flat. Um, you know, this, this downward leg right here uh, is what we see for the, you know, coming down to the current budget level. This point at the end is $5.8 million. Um, so, you know, we, we try to watch things very carefully. We try to watch things and keep it on a nice, uh, on a nice level um, progression so that uh, we're rendering services to the community with, you know, without uh, throwing money away, which really try to get the value for each and every, every dollar that we spend. And that's it. How would you like to proceed, Tim? Uh, am I muted? Thank you, Greg. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I'd like to go by section by section. Uh, if we're on page 45 of our document that Greg and Susan gave us, <clears throat> it does list the consolidated uh, the budget proposals. 
And if we can just um, think if we take each section, like the revenues would be the one section, salaries is the second one, and library materials, maybe we can um, go around the table and, and everybody can make their, their comments. If anybody wishes to make a modification to any of the line items, uh, please make a motion, then we'll second it or not second it and then vote on it and accept it. But if we do that, um, I think there's like about nine or 10 sections, maybe we can get through it and uh, have our final um, um, vote on the, uh, on the budget. So with that being said, Excuse me, Greg. I just want to say you're you're breaking up quite a bit. I didn't hear where you said we're starting from. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm breaking up. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. Move it closer. Okay. So uh, I thought we would take it section by section. And the first section being the revenues. Uh, if we're on page 45 or if we're on the supplemental uh, budget document that Greg and Susan gave, they're basically the same. We can start, we can go around uh, in our normal procedure, the way we always do, where we just, every single uh, trustee gets to have their comment. And then uh, anyone who wants to make a change to any of the line items, uh, we will, um, they will make a motion, we'll second it, we'll vote on it, accept it, and we can change it, um, and then uh, move on to the next section. So does anybody have any questions, Carolyn? Yes, um, I have questions on the uh, beginning pages of this document where all the different um, areas are, are discussed, personnel, um, the opening of the library. So I'd like to go back to page five. That, those, that's where my questions were. I rose my hand before I sent you a text to see how you wanted to handle this. But if you want to... Um, start with the budget you can and then go back to those questions because i can't actually address the budget if i don't get these questions answered about the details so how would you like to proceed this is vodka by the way um well let's uh you wanted to go back to page five um, yes, we could start there and then Transition. can I just you wanted to go over my the, questions? You wanted to go over the transition letter? Um, yeah, there's a lot of statements in there that I have questions about. So would I just be asking Greg and he'll answer them or Susan, is that how you want to do this? I'd rather go through the budget. Let's okay, go, well, I can't the go through the budget until the details that Greg outlined in his budget document are addressed. I have questions about what was stated. Well, let's hit, let's make it a board decision because it I really be a board to... decision to not review this information before we vote. Let's make it a board decision because we have previously decided uh, at, at previous meetings. That we yeah, were can, you, can you please cite the meeting and the discussion? I don't remember it. I've got my gavel. Carolyn, you're not going to speak until I am done. That would be great. Thank you. So we had previously decided at uh, other board meetings that we uh, have accepted the board procedures, uh, the, the library staff procedures for um, creating their budget documents. And I don't think that we need to review that procedure again because we've all accepted it and, 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 and accepted it. So uh, I would rather just go in straight into the budget. I have, you have a question? A... Yes, Carolyn, you have more questions. Absolutely. Great. Nice. When, at what board meeting, did we have a discussion to decide on the procedures they were going to follow to create a budget? When did we have that discussion and vote on it? Because I don't recall it at all. Okay, does everybody, the, let me ask you that to the, to the general board. Does any other board rem member remember that we decide, okay, decided to accept the procedures that uh, the staff went through? I in need order to, to know the board meeting date. Okay. Carolyn, I asked other board members. Let me say, sh see a show of hands. Does everybody else remember that we already decided that we were not, we accepted the board procedures? 
Does anybody else remember that we did that? Karen remembers? Anybody when? else remember? That? When did we do it? Carolyn, I don't have an I, I don't have an eidetic memory. I can remember. Carolyn, stop talking. Oh my God. I'm gonna okay. All right, how do I mute Carolyn? All right, thank you. I need you to stop talking while I'm talking. All right? Because we're never gonna get through anything if you keep talking while I'm talking. Thank you. So I don't have a memory, an eidetic memory, if that's the term, of what was decided at every single board meeting. That's ridiculous. Nobody does. All right? That cannot be. I believe we all, I'm still talking, so you can keep your hand up. That's nice, but I'm still talking. Roll your eyes all you want, but I'm still talking. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm going to ask each board member if they are okay with the procedures. I I'm not going to do that because we already decided. We decided, and I don't care if you don't remember that we decided, but we did. Now, you may talk. Unmute yourself. This board has never discussed the budget, let alone decide how the budget process should take place. That is not true. You, can't, you know what, if this was your plan, you should have emailed us and let us know. Just give us a 48 page document that I went through and there's numerous questions that I have because this is a budget process. And that's why I, I'm here today to ask these questions to get some clarification. I never voted on any budget process, or did I deny a budget process because it did not happen. And if you can't specifically state when that happened and what the vote was, it's irrelevant. And this is a budget meeting. Where we're discussing the budget numbers. I have questions about the information presented in the budget. To just say yes is not a budget process. I have questions and I need answers from Greg and Susan. Well, we're not going to discuss, okay, I can't believe that you don't remember because it's ridiculous that you don't remember. But uh, I remember everything, that's your problem. I remember everything and that's your problem. So um, we specifically have previously decided that the process by which the, the uh, staff goes through to create their budget was acceptable to this board. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> so we're not going to get into yeah. this. We did. I have questions about the document from Greg, and I would like to ask my questions. All right. You may ask your questions, but we are not going to have a 12-hour meeting on this, okay? However long it takes. It's a 48 hour However long it takes. This is not your meeting. This is our meeting. All right. Transparency is why we are all here. And unfortunately, budget meetings usually take longer than 10 minutes. So whenever I can ask my questions, please let me know. Ask your first question. At the beginning of Greg's document on page five, Okay, my question was, I went through the budget and I realized that this whole budget is gonna be in the middle, is gonna be in the midst of the coronavirus. So my question was, was that a consideration when we decided what we're cutting? Is that what you considered when you decided to decrease line items or was that, are we assuming we're not gonna be in a long, coronavirus situation here. How are you looking at this? Because for the reopening, I have some questions, but I think- hey, Well, we did, of course, keep in mind that we are in the middle of a pandemic. We are currently closed to the public. Of course, we were factoring that in. We made calculations as best we could. There are certainly our libraries that don't attempt to do their budget at this point in the year. And we've talked about that before, that we don't have to have this budget passed until fall. So it is the board's decision to have a budget presented at this time. And add, this year we have the added drama of it being during the coronavirus pandemic. So oh. we have done our best to try to gauge 
what our staffing levels, what kinds of services we will be able to provide are, um, but we don't know, and as Greg repeated several times, we are doing this in an atmosphere of uncertainty. So we've done our best, but it, we, we are not psychic. We do not know when the state will be move into phase four or phase five, and that will have an impact. It may go faster than we thought, in which case we'll be spending more than we had thought. Okay, so Susan, phase three reopening, does that mean patrons are coming to the library? The we are in phase three right now, and that does not mean patrons are coming to the library. It means that we are starting up our no, hold, no contact holds pickup service, which actually we had the first day of today. Okay, so, for, well then my idea of the reopening process is different. Um, do we know when patrons will be coming into the library? I saw something I think online where you could schedule a reservation. You so can we'll schedule a reservation. They are taking reservations on computer appointments starting next week. That is the only circumstance under which patrons are coming in the library at this time. Okay. We will not be having patrons in the library till the state is moved on to phase four. Okay, I've got uh, some indication. Carolyn, I've got indications from other trustees that they want to make a comment. So, uh, Diane, you wanted to say something? Okay, let's move on to question number two. That answer was um, given already. So let's move on to question number two. And we're not talking about when the library is opening. We're not, this is a budget discussion. Okay, question number two. So my next question then is, um, regarding the um, sanitizing that needs to take place, um, I, I don't see anything in Greg's report that indicates um, what what process you've created and the frequency and. and uh, okay, Carolyn, I'm going to stop you on that one. No, no, that is that, that is not a budget that question. Plus. That's a process question of of cleaning. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cut you off on that one because that's it's irrelevant. No, you don't need to answer that, Susan. I saw in the budget that I think you're allocating is it thirty or fifty thousand for coronavirus, and I think that's cleaning and PPE, something like that. Does that right. sound correct? But I also saw in the May budget a three thousand dollar charge. I thought it said sanitation. Is that what it costs once to come into the library? Uh, no, I think you're probably just thinking of our nightly cleaning that happens. Okay, then. okay that's fine. Because I was going to say, how did you ascertain, you know, how many, of, how many of these sanitation processes you need to go through? So right now we're not opening and you don't plan on having patrons come into the library, which would increase the cost for sanitizing until right. which phase? I, I'm unclear. So okay. then my questions are, mo are mute. Mute. Mute as if you can't talk. So, I'm sorry, is it, I didn't hear you. When do we plan on people coming in? When the state goes into phase four, which and I don't have a date on that. So. Okay, no, that's fine. But I mean, um, the, the $50,000 for COVID-19, I asked them to pull that number out just so we would have a clear idea of what particular costs were and it's things like hand sanitizer it's it's um and we don't know how much of that we will be spending but we wanted to be sure that we had enough because I can't have the library open I legally cannot have the library open without the ability to keep it clean and to protect right. and I was hoping that maybe there was a process that you created which would include the cost associated with it it's not, yeah, I have processes, in the, but those processes are not about cost. We have estimated costs based on the process and just what we know and just, you know, how hard it is to get a hold of some of these things. It's a okay. hot market okay. these days. Reopening, another um, measure will be, I guess, furniture needs to be relocated or reallocated. Correct. That's okay. going to be uh, that's, that's a question about the process of reopening, My not the budget. Is, well, let's move on. Before we get into that stage, we did need to have our capital assets inventoried and tagged. And I was wondering if you considered maybe doing that before things get dispersed or whatever. Um, well, we don't have to have our capital assets tagged. The board decided against that. So, Carolyn, that's not a budget question. No, we, it is. We that's decided against hiring the company who was only going to provide a partial inventory. Yeah. 
but according to our auditors, we have one year to complete this inventory and tagging. Although I did see in this document from Greg, we're trying to push it off to 2025. This is critical, especially now when we reopen and you're gonna be getting rid of quite a bit of furniture or moving it and I, I'm concerned we need to categorize it and maybe this inventory process should be implemented. That's up to the board. My understanding was that uh, we did talk to the auditor literally this week and I asked that very question and he did not by any means think that that was necessary. He thought that we what we already have control of is all we need to have control of. So, so you have an inventory control process even though he said we don't. Carolyn, oh, we've talked about the inventory control again. process at a, at a previous board meeting that is not on the, tonight's agenda. It's in the budget it's in the budget packet being pushed to 2025 when the auditor stated it needed to be done in one year. So well, let's talk about that in 2025. Pardon me? Let's talk about that in 2025. The condition is one year and it affects the reopening of the library. It should be discussed tonight. That's why I brought it up. We're not going to talk the inventory processing tonight. It's not on the agenda. Carolyn, can we please discuss, Carolyn? Can we please discuss it at a regular board meeting instead of- No, I'm, I'm, excuse me, I'm talking about the budget document that we got from Greg. Okay. So we don't, have, we don't have any- Somebody uh, else having another question on, uh, on your area there. Uh, so Carolyn, you had a couple of questions on page five. Does anybody else have any questions on page five? Karen, got your hand up. Thank you. Uh, you might be muted there, Karen. Yeah, I'm sorry, it took me a minute. Um, sure. Can we go back to what you started out doing? That is, I think we were first looking at the section of the budget entitled revenue, and then we were going to go to the other sections. Is that is that what you said we were going to do originally? Yes, I, would, I would love to do that. Yeah, but I'm right. starting at the beginning. But as, but sorry. As, Carolyn, as always, Carolyn has hijacked the meeting. You have a, a wonderful superpower, Carolyn. I, I applaud you for that, and I, I just have no ability to stop you from doing it. I would, I would no, rather could go section by meetings, section. I could have yeah. asked this earlier. I, I understand. Section you do have section, questions. That's wonderful. Or everyone think, else's questions. Why yeah, why don't we go section by section, and then you can ask your questions pertaining to that section. That would make more sense to me. Right? Is that, I'm seeing, I'm seeing uh, a care, uh, Linda, you've got your hand up. Hi. Um, I don't think this is addressed. I was just wondering um, if we're talking about page five still. Um, is there a reasoning why we're doing less hours? I just didn't understand the whole concept of why we're closed for less hours. Uh, well, we're just, we have the staff currently divided into the four teams. So they're spread out over the course of two weeks. So, um, I cut the Sunday because, well, I mean, right now, I don't, there's no reason to have staff in the building on Sundays at time and a half anyway. But, um, but yeah, I mean, this, that's the kind of thing that if the board decides they want to change the hours, they can do that. But the limit is the number of staff I have. Although it sounds like we have a ton of staff with 100 people, when you've spread them out into four teams, it, some of the departments are very, very thin on that staffing model. And that is to try to prevent the spread of coronavirus. So um, we, had, I talked uh, with the trustee earlier today about potentially maybe adjusting the hours so that there would be a day that we opened a little later and uh, stayed open later so that, you know, there were some more evening hours or there are definitely things that could be done to tweak it. And, uh, and it would also be based on, you know, what, um, what people, what we hear from the patrons that they need. We need to hear back from the patrons. But this is the plan at the moment. And this is what we're doing right now with the staff in the building. Okay. Right. Thank but you for that. Other general questions. How about you, Diane? You haven't had it. Oh, Linda's got her hand up still. Yes, Linda. Uh, you're, you're muted still, Linda. She's not <laughs> muted though. Well, I don't know, I can't hear her. She's just I moving can't her, her either. Are you just moving your mouth and not saying anything? Just to freak us out? Uh, we can't hear you. On okay, second. can you hear me now? My internet yes. is back. Yes. Okay. There we go. Um, also, with the roof being delayed, right? 
Am I reading that correctly? It, it's, it's, it, we didn't get to it last year, so it's coming in the coming year. All of those things in that section are for next year, for, for this budget year, which okay. starts right. July 1. Got it. Okay, thank you. That's everything. Good. All right. Uh, Patty, do you have any general questions? How about, how about let's get the general questions out of the way? No. Karen, do you have any general questions? I, I, I'm not sure if it's general or specific. I'll wait to the salary section. That is, I think, where my question would fit. All right, great. Diane, do you have any general questions that we can get out of the way? You're on me. No, Diane says no. All right, Carolyn, you got another general question you want to ask? Susan, regarding the reduced hours that we have here, is this for when patrons are coming into the library or not? Is this for now? It's just what we're doing now. And uh, probably initially when the patrons start coming in the building to browse the stacks, we will still be unlimited hours. Um, because this did, at that point, the pandemic will still be going on and I'm trying to keep people separated. For one thing, if that means if one staff member gets sick, I don't have to send everybody home and close the library. I just have one team that's going out at a time. So yeah, so, but when we're back, you know, when we're in phase five, I'm sure that everything will go much more back to normal. We'll, we'll have people more working together and we will be uh, working more our regular hours. Okay, so during this phase three, which I think is going to change to phase four quickly, at least I heard that on the news, we will have patrons coming into the library and they'll be able to walk all around the library. Is that the plan? It, it is part of the plan. I'm not sure it will be right boom at the beginning of phase four. Um, it, it will kind of depend on the, the government's recommendations. But I would like people to be able to browse for books. What, what we would not have in phase four is people being able to, we wouldn't be having programs in the library yet. We would not be booking meeting room spaces yet. We would not be encouraging people to come and use the library as a destination yet. It, we would so certainly have- My question about the sanitizing process, every time somebody comes in, you have to sanitize that whole book section? Or no, 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 no. We're not doing that. that. That would be impossible. No, okay. but we, we have, we're, we're focusing on high touch surfaces, which is, okay. you know, now we have staff in the building, so we're already doing that. Okay, and then my but, other question is the hours being nine to seven, you know, we're li our library hasn't really been fully staffed with patrons, those hours in a normal cycle. I'm thinking now with the coronavirus and there's still that fear factor about coming out, um, I was wondering if the hour, if you should, instead of being open every day, all day, maybe just pick a few days or maybe do mornings and then evenings. Right. I just feel like it's a long stretch and I don't know if you're going to get the people, but I still think you're going to be spending a lot of time cleaning. And, the, and just one last thing I heard, the village who actually provides numerous services, they're open 9 to 12 and that's all week. But I feel like that's a little less time following up after patrons or customers. It was just my thought, because I think it's a pretty long spread. Right. Well, I mean, I think this would be a perfectly appropriate thing to be discussing at the board meeting next week. I just don't think that it's a budget thing particularly. So I'm very interested in the board's input. I can share documents with you that we have created, uh, but I don't think this is a budget issue particularly. So you don't think to cut the hours would, cut, would decrease the cost? I don't think we're going to decide that tonight. It's a fluid situation. I'm okay. happy to hear the board's opinion, but, you know, we've made this estimate if you want to change you know, the budget line based on what you think that we ought to be doing, you can certainly do that. Okay, and then just one last question for these, for the phase three and phase four, have you selected um, like maybe unique services you're offering or is it the whole library, whatever? Uh, we, I, I have a whole plan. I mean, I did explain it at the last board meeting, what we were offering in each phase of the of the plan, um, you know, and I can understand why people wouldn't remember that because it's my day to day, but it's not your day to day. Um, but yeah, we have this is all mapped out what we're offering at different times. So you can come in for passports and just whatever you we, we the State Department is not currently letting us offer passports. So it'll be when the State Department says we can. So did you give us a copy of that? And our, our, I, I guess I missed it in the board packet last month. I remember you talking about tech and maintenance, but I don't remember about 
patron services, what, what our patrons can come into the library for? Hey, Carolyn, that's really not a budget question. That's so, a, well, that's a, a library can we please question. talk about the budget? Yeah, we're, I we're, mean, we're, I don't want to be here budget. until 10 o'clock tonight. Right. All these questions, we Sorry, have another meeting next board. week. Can we please just talk about the budget? Thank you. Okay. We so, open the library as part of the budget. All right, let's, let's move on. Thank you, everyone. All right, so let's, let's maybe start. Where I, still on um, page five, paragraph one was about online services. All right, Carolyn, you know what? Why don't you wait until we get to that section? So let's do section by section. And then when you want to do a spot of a section where you have a question on a line item, then you can ask your question. Okay, what page are you on? Line. You're not on page five? Carolyn, why do you keep talking when I'm talking? Why don't you wait till I'm done? That would be oh, I thought you were finished. Well, you were wrong. Again. So let's go section by section. Then right. when there's what, a line what item. Of, when our, of this document, right? That's what you're talking about? Well, it's on page 45. Is okay, the, I'm on page five still of Greg's well, 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 document. Get over it. It's we're, gonna move on. No, we're moving on to the budget. If you would just listen to me for one minute, please. Thank no, you. No, I have too many questions to try to we're figure it out on a budget sheet. Okay. When we get to the line item of the budget. No, it's not. It's not that simple. You're not. You're talking when I'm talking. Again, you're doing it again. Carolyn. Thank you. That's wonderful. When we get to the line item of the budget that pertains to your question, then you can ask your question at that line item of that section. How about that? That would be my questions are gauged by Greg's presentation that he got an award for. I, I, I know I can't disseminate them for another page. It's what? so difficult. Are you leaving? No, I'm plugging in. Oh, I thought you were leaving. I know. Sorry, I'm okay. still here. All right, okay. okay. I have more questions on Greg's presentation. No, you know, Carolyn, we're going to go, we're going to do it my way, because guess well, what? Then when you're done, I'll ask my questions. I don't care. Do it any way you That's want. Great. I'm fine. Thank you. How wonderful. Yes, Diane. You have your hand up. Can't hear you, Diane. Can't hear you. I can't hear you. I'm, thank you. Okay, let's uh, begin our discussion. What page, Tim? Page 45 of Greg's document is the budget. Thank you. So if we go section by section, maybe we can take the revenue section. Does anybody have any comments about the revenue section, which I would be surprised you did because it's money coming in. Nobody has any any effect over it. What? It's the section. Okay. Let's go person by person. Carolyn, I'm going to get every board member. They're going to go around in our procedures. You don't have to raise your hand because everybody's going to get an opportunity to speak about every section. Okay? Per our procedures that we've been following for the last many meetings. Good. Now. We'll start with Linda. Do you have any comments, questions, or changes? To the, no, you don't. Thank you. How about Patty? Any comments, questions, or, or discussions on the revenue section? Uh, no, sir. Thank you. We have no control over the revenue. It's what's well, I know. We don't. So that's, that's great. Sue, any, anything on that section? Nope. Karen, anything on the revenue section? No questions or comments on revenue. Nice. How about you, Diane? Anything on the revenue section? No. Nope. Carolyn, do you have anything to say about the revenue section? Not hearing anything. So I'll assume you're okay with the revenues. I can't hear you, Carolyn. Are you saying anything? <laughs> Oh, Carolyn, you are muted. No, you're not muted now. Okay. Uh, regarding the revenue section, um, we have um, a um, special revenues fund that we use for security tax. And um, I understand in Greg's document that 
it is required by the state statute that these insurance payments and taxes are in the in a special revenue fund. And I'm not familiar with that, so I was wondering, Greg, if you could cite that, let me know where I could find it. Um, we have the option of putting uh, uh, Social Security taxes in a special revenue fund and taxing separately from the general fund for that. Um, a long time ago, uh, before I got here, that was set up and we've maintained it going forward. All right, and since it's a restricted fund and um, our future is so up in the air, I would, and, and also, I believe to have a separate fund for regular payments, which are handled through the general fund, would just save one less, one less restricted fund that we have to worry about. So I know I brought this up before, but I wanted to mention that I did notice in my notes at the November 18, 2015 auditors meeting, uh, McClure and Insera did suggest that we delete the revenue fund and move that into the general fund. And I, I guess you could say, oh, what if we forget the money or lose the money or whatever? It's part of payroll for the most part. And in my experience, these costs are taken out every time payrolls perform. So I think there's no need for a safety factor, but it would help us not have funds restricted. We already have capital assets that are restricted. And I'm thinking this would be a little more fluid with our money. That's why I'm mentioning it again. Are you, Carolyn, do you want to make a motion? I don't know if I could. You, can, you may make a motion. Every trustee can make a motion. I, I don't think it's a budget item. I think it's more like something to do with when you come to levying. Is that correct, Greg? Yeah, so um, what we do is uh, we levy that separately as it was set up before I uh, started here at the library and that was the practice uh, that we've continued uh, going forward. Great, so let's, Carolyn, why don't you bring that up when we have the levy discussion? Well, it doesn't have anything to do with the levy, it's restricting funds. The so levy. Kind of a a le well, apparently, according to Greg, it's a levy issue. So why don't well, you bring that up? He says that's when you appropriate the money. I'm talking about restricting funds in the middle of a coronavirus. I understand. But well, moving well, on to my next with, question. With me, Tim, yeah, yeah Carolyn, bring it up when we talk about the levy. It would be great. Uh, Carolyn, uh, we used to have upwards of $1.1 million in all the special revenue funds and it, when, I, when I first got here and it was a real problem. What we've done since I got wow. here, we've run that down okay. by not levying very much. So right now it's just a conduit. There's, you know, there's very little money in, in that special revenue fund that would cause an issue and, you know, I mean, we we would very unlikely be looking at that money uh, as a savior. I, I don't have the exact amount. Uh, but okay, no, it's it's like 100000 It's low. It is relatively well, low. You're looking at, that's the aggregation of all of the special revenue funds. Uh, as of the end of the, of the uh, 2019 fiscal year, there was $4,687 in the Social Security Special Revenue Fund. So what we try to do is, what we try to do when we structure the levy is to levy for the amount that we're spending in the next fiscal year. Right, okay, I understand that. So I guess the fact that we should dissolve the fund, which was recommended by our former auditors is not, um, I guess, appealing to anyone. All right, then I had another question. In your report, you mentioned the library proposes fees, um, or maybe Susan did. The library proposes program fees. I was unaware that we charged fees for any programs. Nobody has suggested charging for programs. It's written on page 12 in the GFOA. The library proposes program fees, um, and taxes with the goal of exceeding operating expenses. But we do not, unless, I thought maybe you started, but we do not charge any fees for our programs, correct? 
I just thought it changed, so I'm questioning it. We no, we do not charge pro, charge okay. program fees. It's just part of an old policy. Okay, and then um, regarding the grant funding, I, we have two or three. Our main grant is the per capita grant. I've noticed that when we get our grants, we're we're using them for whatever the purpose. Is. But what I'm thinking of now with the coronavirus, and we're going to have there's going to be a uh, an issue with real estate and. Uh, sales tax and all that. Do we want to use our uh, grant funding to decrease the budget as opposed to just using it to increase items? It's just a thought because I'm worried at some point we're going to be having to make sacrifices. So that was my opinion of what a grant could well, be. We do, we do have items that are budgeted against that that would otherwise have been in the budget. So yes, there are things that are pro projected to come out of the per capita grant. Okay, and then one last question, because I don't know if it was um, um, an error. The special reserve, special revenues does not include a building and sites fund, correct? Greg? Are you making a statement or are you asking? Yeah, I'm asking because it said in your That's document. That's a special revenue fund. Pardon me? That's a special revenue fund. So we have a building in sites as well as it's called building and maintenance. It's called building and maintenance. And it's a restricted fund. Yeah. Okay. Why would they restrict funds uh, for that? Carolyn, that's answered. It's not. That's not a revenue question. So it sure is. It's a restriction of revenues. Well, it, it's, well, we already have capital or a general fund without any restrictions. It's something to consider. Well, fine. Okay, Bring those are my only question. revenue questions. Thank you. Thank you, great. We're done with that one. All right, salaries, number two. Um, uh, and, and I will start with a question. So uh, Susan, you had, um, you had uh, said that everybody's getting a 2.1% raise generally. Is that I, what? I believe COLA this year is set by the state is 2.3. 2.3. Okay, so that's my ma matching our cost of living for the uh, for the state, right? Okay, that was my only question on that one. Uh, let's go around. Anybody got any questions on the salaries um, section? Uh, we can start with Karen. Karen's got her hand up. We have uh, some comments, and I'd like to make a motion too. Absolutely. Uh, the salary section. It's the only section I wish to address this evening. So if you'll just humor me, I'll tell you why. Um, I uh, did vote for the abatement uh, at our last meeting. I did want to give our taxpayers a break. Uh, but it was, when I voted for that, it was my understanding that the cost of that abatement would really come out of our savings, that is, out of our general fund. Uh, but what I'm concerned about is this budget, is the abatement, the, you know, the giving back of those tax dollars really seems to be coming somewhat at the expense of our employees. And, and I'm very concerned about that. And I'll explain why I think it's a at least part at the expense of our employees. So a number of employee positions are not being filled. We can see that on the uh, sheets that have been given out to us. So those are not being filled. Payroll is going to be down for that reason regardless. Um, a lot of our employees are not going to get paid for as many hours as they normally would. There's an 18% reduction in hours due to uh, the schedule that we're having now. Some people who are in salary won't, won't suffer that, but our hourly workers who make the least amount of money, I, may, I believe, uh, are gonna be suffering that reduction in their salary. Uh, there's also the reduction because we're not paying the Sunday premium. Um, and then on top of it, there it looks like they're not gonna get any raises that bring them up any more than the cost of living. And, um, you know, again, I, I just feel that um, I didn't want to give our taxpayers a break, but I didn't want to hurt our employees in the process of doing that. Uh, and I'd like to bring the salary uh, item, the salary uh, proposed part of the budget up enough so that we can at least give our employees 1% above the cost of living as a raise. So that would be bringing it from 23 to 3.3. Now, 
we, we will still address this later. And it's not like every employee gets exactly 3.3. It averages out to that amount. That's how we usually do it. Um, but I'd like to put a little bit more money for salaries, either for raises um, or for more hours for our employees. Because I, I feel that our employees are, are really going to be hurt, particularly our hourly employees who aren't going to be getting as many hours and who don't earn that much to begin with. So this, this is the motion I'm going to make, and you know, accept any friendly amendments to it, uh, if anyone wants to. If you look at page 45, the second, center part of the page has to deal with salaries. And if you look under those two bold lines, and let your eye travel down under the proposed 2020-21 budget, that's what we're looking at tonight, you see that the total salary amount is 3.089 million. Have I got that right, Greg? Am I looking yes, in the right place? That's Telling true. people where to look? Okay. So if we added an additional 1% to that, uh, you know, which would give people a salary boost or, a, you know, maybe some more hours, that would be roughly an additional 30000 um, So I would propose uh, bumping up the total salary amount for the 2021 budget by an additional $30,000. That's my motion. Um, I, Tim, I'll it's up to you. It. Okay, there's a second. So a second. Uh, my motion's on the table. Uh, who is the second? I'm sorry. Linda. Um, Thank Linda. you. I believe Linda was. All right, that's very nice. We can go around. Patty, do you have something to say about this one? Yeah, my question is, when are we, when is the government scheduling another increase of minimum wage? Because that will affect our salaries also. Does anybody have any idea on that? I think, isn't it January 1st, this next one? So, yeah. So yeah. that technically would be in this budget cycle. Well, hang on one second, please. Um, there's, a, uh, there's an adjustment on uh, July 1st and then there's an adjustment on January 1st. And I, I can't remember uh, the numbers offhand. I'd have to, I'd have to find uh, some documentation uh, on that. But what I can tell you about that is that at the moment, there's only one employee who's, who's affected by that. Okay. Okay. Now, that's not to say there will always only be one employee because as time passes and as we hit increases down the road, what's, what starts to happen is that the lower two uh, salary grades collapse into the salary grade above them. So you have the bottom three, basically, uh, salary grades that are, you know, that are being paid the same, which isn't fair uh, because uh, there's a, you know, there's a very wide disparity in um, uh, skill set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's, that's not an issue that we necessarily have to address for the current budget cycle. It is a, an issue that we need, uh, Susan and I need to do some planning on in order to uh, address it in future budget cycles. Yeah. Okay. No, because I'm, re I realize you push up the bottom ones and that affects everyone above them. Right. That's why I'm wondering, this percentage, will this keep us still legal or will this will still be affected by the, uh, the uh, raise in uh, minimum wage? Yeah, you know, as I said, it only affects one person and it affects a person that's in a range that has room to take those changes. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you for answering the question. And that's this year. Again, we have to do something. Yeah, next year is another story. Yeah. Okay, thank you for answering the question. Nice. Uh, Sue, do you have something to say on the, uh, on the proposed? Um, oops. I just really, I, I want to make sure that we also keep in mind that if we do reduce hours and schedules for staff, that may then um, force them to have to go and get alternative employment somewhere else. And we could lose a lot of people that are, you have been with us a long time and have been dedicated and are trained and, 
you know, know our patrons and our community. Um, and I do also feel that, you know, if you could figure out a way to kind of roll some of those deductions, like the reduced Sunday hours and say, you know, what is, how much has this been in this person's salary? You know, how much have they been compensated with this, um, you know, time and a half on Sunday? Could we take that and roll it into their hourly rate and raise their rate so that they don't lose compensation, you know, and I think it would be a relatively insignificant amount for the library, but for the individual, you know, if it's like 30 bucks a week, that could be important for a lot of people that are living in a part-time wage. And that way you also could have an advantage of getting a little bit closer to that $15 an hour. And I'm talking about those lowest paid staff when we do have to get to that legal limit. Something to consider. So, Sue, I'm going to ask you a question on this. How does that kind of relate to um, Karen's proposal to increase overall the line item, <clears throat> the entire budget, by $30,000? <clears> are, you, are you saying that maybe we do that, but then, then proportion it such that the, the people who are most affected benefit by that increase somehow? Is that kind of what you're saying? Not necessarily, because you know what, I think Karen, what you're saying, it, my understanding is it's it's the, the cost of living, right? That you're talking about? You know, that's where uh, I was coming from when I came up with that additional 1%. Right. Uh, but I am, considered, I am concerned about these other issues too, the reduction in hours. I, I don't know exactly how to address that. Um, that's why I said I'm open to friendly amendments because uh, I just put out one idea that I had for addressing this problem. I don't know that it, you know, it fully addresses the reduction in pay, especially that some of our lower paid employees will suffer. And, and again, we, we do have to have a goal because of the state mandate to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. And I'm not sure uh, how many staff still are significantly lower than that rate, but you know, well, how do we do that without then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, now we have to raise the budget this m amount in a big leap and bound instead of doing it minimally and gradually throughout the next few years. Well, if I could just address that piece, we did um, do a rearrangement of our patron services department, which is where most of those uh, positions are and we basically eliminated the shelver position almost completely and we created a, t a higher tier for the passport clerks who had taken on significant additional training and responsibilities and so we have now three tiers of clerks but we only have like two people that are only pages so we actually a great many patron services clerks actually did get a very significant increase in the last year to two years and it was in preparation for the minimum wage changing as well. It was partly an okay. equity issue, but it was partly because we knew that, we, you know, to get that close, get, start getting closer to that 15, we were going to have to make some changes. So we did make some adjustments. But I still agree with you. I mean, I, I do think those are some of the people that work on the Sundays um, are part-timers, and, and those are the ones that are going to be losing that Sunday time and having some of their hours cut back. It's true. Uh, uh, Diane, you have something to say on this one? You're muted, Diane. Yes, I'm trying. There you go. You're okay. okay. All right. There you go. Great. Um, let's see. I distinctly remember asking Susan to... Um, Drop the budget. This is what we asked her to do, and I also remember her saying, unfortunately, the place that needs to be um, looked at is salaries. So this is what she did. She lowered the salaries, and therefore, according to page 45, there's a $416 um, benefit for us. 
So I'm a little confused. If we give thirty thousand, you know, how is that going to change the fact that we asked her to do this? And and I'm sure she had a hard time doing this, but thank you. Yeah, she, she delivered, and now we're telling her not to go back and you know, to do to change it again. And I understand, I mean, I, I agree with Karen and, and uh, the rest of you. But do we want a budget less or not? And if we don't, then yeah, give them a raise. I don't know where we'll take the money from. Uh -oh. Yeah, can I just say, I, I will say, yeah, well, this, even if, if you restored Sunday time, um, if we went back to our regular hours and eliminated the team thing, we still would be reducing the salary line a little bit because of attrition, because we just aren't going to be able to do everything that we would have done. So you could restore some of that money and still it would be reduced to some level. Um, uh, like I said, I don't think I have the staffing to completely restore the hours anytime real soon, but but when we're in phase five, I would anticipate doing that. Just wanted to get that out. Okay, so you can restore hours and uh, give a raise and still be in the same position as you presented? Or? No, it wouldn't be the same. It would be a much, much less of a reduction. I don't remember exactly how much it would be. Greg had a calculation for that. I don't remember exactly what it is okay. for the attrition. I, I, I don't recall okay. off the top of my head. I'd have to try to find my, you know, find something or redo it. Linda, you had something on this? Uh, yeah. Um, the one thing that, um, there was actually a couple things that concerned me with the uh, lowering or the just going with the cost of living. Um, I just noticed going out to the stores lately that prices have all gone up because of um, supplies are low, so supply and demand. So even though that might be the cost of living per se, I think actually the cost of living is, is at a higher rate, just from living it. Um, so that being said, also with what Greg had said, um, that when they looked at our peer groups, that um, we were below uh, the average in salaries. We were at or below, excuse me, quote unquote. So that concerns me also of people leaving our library to possibly get more money someplace else. I know we, that's why the one reason we want an IMRF, so people stayed, but we also have to make our salaries competitive to secure our grade staff. Um, the other thing that uh, I am concerned about is by the reduction of hours that we don't reduce anyone where they don't receive benefits. Okay, so that is my other major concern. I don't want anyone to lose benefits for any reason and have a hardship on their family. Um, so those are my those are my few things that I, I feel that I'm really in support of you know, at least having 3% or 3.3 across the board, um, just because of the peer group. I mean, that's data. There's nothing we can do. That is clear data if we are at or below the average of our peer groups, period. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, but the other concerns are, are, I'm really worried about that too. So thank you. Uh, Susan, do you have anything to say on the loss of benefits for anybody because of reducing those hours? Uh, yeah, I do have three employees who I am very concerned uh, that it will be difficult to get their hours up to the point under the current schedule where they retain them. And I'm absolutely determined to do that, but I don't, I don't know exactly how to do it. Um, you know, we, we are trying to find 
uh, necessary work that, need, that needs to be done, not making up work, but work that needs to be done that can be done from home. And for two of them, I think we can maybe get there. For the third one, I don't believe we can. So um, I, I would welcome actually the board um, making an, a special exception for the 30 hour people to, you know, if they work 50% of their hours to pay them their entire amount. I mean, I, or some kind of a arrangement like that, of that subset of people. Because yes, I am very concerned about that. So um, I, I am very concerned about them too. The last thing I want to do is have someone lose their health insurance at this time. Me too. Um, um, I already made one motion, which is still on the floor, and I, so I don't think I can make another one right now. But once this motion is disposed of, I would be inclined to make a motion that we uh, modify our policy for this year to make sure that people who get a lower amount um, continue to get their health insurance. And I don't know that we need to vote on that tonight because, I don't know, maybe you would need to look at those numbers a little bit more, Susan to figure out what that number would have to be. Yeah. Um, but I don't want anyone to lose their health insurance. Hi, Carolyn. Carolyn's got a hand up. Okay, I have a couple of comments. Um, I wouldn't want to see employees lose their benefits. I, this is a terrible time to end up in that situation. But I think maybe we need to consider keeping their hours afloat at their regular salary instead of increasing it. And maybe that can help us to try to give everyone their hours, but not increase their salaries. Um, we are in a pandemic and, and maybe it's because I come from the corporate world where people are working at home 25% less salaries or they're furloughed or they're laid off. So this is happening. But what I want to mention is I participated in a trustee webinar that was provided by Rails and by ILA. And um, I think it was their attorney who told us, Kelly Hayden, that we need to serious look, seriously look <clears throat> at decreasing our spending because Revenues are going to be a problem. He also mentioned that we should consider furloughs and layoffs. But she said, before you do that, there's many other things you can do. And she gave us a laundry list. And things like a hiring freeze could protect the employees we have now. I mean, our library is not at all going to be the library it was for at least a year. I mean, we're going to be crawling to wherever, whatever the future is. And, and I'm thinking by, put, by a hiring freeze, I saw there was some interest in hiring a community. Um, community but, engagement, but that's on hold. The, the, that already is baked into this budget proposal. Is, but my it, point is with our staff already so involved in the community between going to the schools and participating in all the community events, why do we need to hire a full-time person for that purpose when our own staff is more knowledgeable and already familiar with our with our with our patron base? I mean, to me, that's just not necessary. I know it's like an ILL ILA thing or some library just sends it out to all the libraries. But do we really need that? We have the most engaged. It's not in the budget, Carolyn. It's, it's the budget. not in the budget. I, I already took that out of the budget. That's no, it's part not of the budget. Gone. Sorry, right. sorry. Okay. Those three positions were taken out. That's part of where we are saving money. And not, not a hiring freeze, but attrition, not replacing positions if we if they aren't absolutely necessary. So that's already in here. And then there were a couple other things I noticed, I think, in this budget sheet that we're talking about. Um, there was a line item for volunteers. I think it was $3,000. I don't know that we need any money for volunteers. It's for software to pay for the software logging system that they check in on. And then just that we have a very small um, thank you event for them. Um, they are the ones that run the book sale and they, they in the past have done a great deal of work for us. They, they actually do the work that we would otherwise have to pay employees to do, but 
but uh, the major sorry. expense there is software. Why is this so hard? Ed, no, 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 stop, Carolyn, stop for a minute. Why is this so hard? Volunteers is in section four. Let's focus on section two, which is the same. talking sale. about decreasing costs to save yeah. our employees. I understand. I on the table, too. So I, I think we're going to just zip bar, bar everywhere. You'd stall over the place all the time. Karen, yeah, you had your hand up. I'm oh, still talking. So you're talking about section four. We're moving on. We're on section two. The recommendations from the trustee webinar, which includes volunteers. Okay, but that's, in that, that's section four. We're not on that section. Stop. This is about what we could do instead of furloughing and laying off employees. I would think you'd be interested. I, I am interested, but I'd like to follow a procedure. It would be great. It would just be so wonderful. Karen, you had your hand up. I'm not finished. Are you talking about this section or another section? Can I ask you a question? The table. My motion should be mentioned before moving on to another section. Yeah, we're we're still. We have a motion. I'm on not this. going anywhere. Can I talk to Susan, please? No, we have a motion on the table for this section. Do you right. understand our procedures at all? I'm talking about raises for our staff that you want to increase. You know what? Before you just automatically give people a raise. Maybe we should consider other things we can cut. We are in the middle of a pandemic. You'd never think of that or realize that listening to us. How do you not talk about what you can maintain so you can give something to the employees? We can't just say yes to everything. No one's saying yes to everything. Well, whatever. Well, that's why I'm discussing these options with Susan. Okay, great. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Please, please, please go ahead. Susan, it mentions eliminating overtime. I don't even know if we pay overtime. Do we do that? You're on mute. on mute. Susan, you're on mute. Sorry. I forgot I muted myself. Um, yeah, we, we don't pay it overtime very much. It, it's very, it's pretty infrequent. Uh, mostly when there's a particular project that needs to be implemented. May I, may I clarify? Yeah, please do. Hey. We pay a, summer, uh, a Sunday premium at time and a half, which you may consider overtime, but other than that, we do not pay for hours in excess of 37 and a half hours per week. Okay. And it's not that we're stiffing them, it's that we hold everybody's hours to 37 and a half hours per week so that we are not paying overtime. Right. In that regard, but we do Thanks. pay a Sunday premium. I want to be absolutely clear about that. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that's what we were talking about. Okay, and then can I ask you another question? Intern hours, is that something we're gonna need this summer? Or is that that we might be able oh, we, to do? That was already, I took that out already. That was in programming and I took it out. All right. All right, I was just trying to find other options to be able to do this. Okay, and then it does say salary reduction. So we're talking about giving them a raise but then we're worried about losing employees, losing hours. So maybe we need to figure this out. I'd rather see employees keep hours and for one year, maybe not get a raise because as much as groceries are going up in the stores, there's still a lot of people out of work. But that's my point. Thank you. We've got a motion on the table to increase the total salaries line item by $30,000. So in, in answer to one of Diane's points, <clears throat> that would still decrease, have a total decrease of our total salaries by $386,270. Just, just pointing that out. This, is, this would not affect, totally affect the decrease in salaries. Am I, am I right about that, Greg? I'm not sure, Tim. Okay. So if we, uh, in, in your page 45, <clears throat> you show a decrease in salaries of $416,270. Yes, I do. Yes. So if we increase the budget for total salaries by $30,000, then that amount, $416,270, did come out to 
uh, $386,270. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Just pointing that out to everybody that, that our, our total decrease in uh, salary line item will be 386270 if that $30,000 is approved. That's my comment on that one. So we did have a second on that, emo on that uh, motion. Uh, does anybody have anything else they'd like to say? I, I, I do understand what uh, people have been saying about the um, losing the benefits. And, you know, to, to Carolyn's point about increasing the hours for those people, yeah, it's a great sentiment, but we just can't, we can't magically increase hours because if they don't have the work to do because of the current situation um, and the library uh, overall hours of operation are being decreased, <clears throat> then that is, uh, is problematic. Uh, I would be more inclined to uh, maybe at the next meeting to talk about uh, a special exemption for those two employees uh, and myself. So, um, does that, yeah, oh, we got more hands, uh, Diane. Yes, Diane. Okay, yeah, I'm just wondering how 30,000, um, how was that pulled out of the air or was that based on any certain amount of money per employee? That was a change or? from a 2.3% to a 3.3%. That was a 1% change to the raise. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Carolyn, you had your hand. Yeah, I have. I know I thought of something else, but I had a question for Susan. Susan, right now, our staff, if they're not in the library, aren't they working from home? Yes. So no one's losing hours, right? No, not right now, nobody is. No, we are paying the staff their full scheduled hours through June because that was all budgeted, but this is for next year. Oh, so July 1st is going to be a problem. Correct. All right, I got that. Okay, then I have a question for Greg. Greg, since we're talking about salaries, I was wondering if you could tell me what the IMRF employer contribution rate is for this year. Um, we're using, I believe, 6.3% for the entire year. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, do you know what it was? It lower last year? Yes. Wow. This is great. Okay. Well, I've seen some horrible, horrible numbers, so I was concerned. Okay. So it's gone up. From, I think it was 5.4 or, or is it 5? It hasn't uh, gone up a percent, has it? Sorry. Look. So our, our percent is this low because we don't have an outstanding balance, correct? We have a we have a, a a small unfunded liability because okay. because of the market working against us, and it's the unfunded liability that causes other people's interest rates to be so high. Is that it? That's correct. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, the the, the uh, contribution rate for. Uh, for the 2021 calendar year um, is right now 6.55. And I think it was, uh, I think it was six uh, last year. Okay, Greg, you don't, you said now, it's not gonna, they can't raise it in the middle of a year, can they? They raise it uh, January 1st every year, which is the middle okay. of our fiscal year. Okay. All right, so um, so that's three tenths percent of what four? No, no, salaries are only two million four. Um, I, I don't know what you're saying. Well, we pay. We're going to pay 03 percent more now than we paid last year. So if we give these people a raise, well, no, actually we're paying six point three. So six point three percent on on salaries. Is, is also an increase we need to consider. So the more we, the more you increase the raise, the more you give to IMRF. And we're already three tenths of a percent and we're talking millions, I think is well, the dollar. 
let's right. let's be extreme. Let's let's say that the contribution rate is ten percent because that's easy for me to calculate it. Oh, but let's just pretend it's ten percent. If you increase salaries by three uh, thirty thousand dollars, then what you're talking about potentially is a uh, a uh, 10% increase or $3,000, not millions, you're talking about $3,000 to uh, IMRF. Okay, and that's right. Even though it's on the whole salary, it's yeah, only a yeah. portion. I got you. you let me finish. But it's only full-time people, right? We have a lot of part-time yeah, yeah, 20 yeah. hours. Yeah, let me, let me finish, please. It's for Sorry. all employees, all employees who have a job that is rated at 1,000 hours or more per year, which works out to roughly, uh, I think it's 19.3 hours a week or something like that uh, because there's 52 weeks. So um, a lot of the employees that are part-time um, don't have IMRF as a benefit. So under the scenario where we're using a 10% uh, rate just for ease of calculation, that 10% would not apply to the entire th uh, $30,000 that Karen has put in her motion. It would be a lesser amount. And, oh. I, and I can't tell you what that lesser amount I would. got it. Okay, thank you. That's a good point though, Carolyn. Thank you. But it really probably amounts to about $1,000 or so. I think that's a fair estimate, Tim. Yep. Sue, you had your hand up. Um, you know, I'm kind of new at this, but I I kind of like to make an amendment, you know, for to add an additional thirty thousand dollars to the budget, a friendly amendment, so that we can make sure that those Sunday hourly workers can get that rolled into their compensation, so that they don't have a decrease in their compensation. You know, most of those folks are like paycheck to paycheck people you know they they're the lowest paid people in our building and then all of a sudden you know they've counted on this additional compensation on sunday and now it's going to be removed and so it seems like a fairly low amount to be able to distribute to those folks so i mean i i don't know the procedure is on that but i'd like to make an amendment for that go ahead karen you're on mute Sorry, uh, I would accept that friendly amendment that would bring it up to 60,000. Um, I, I would say that we've expressed uh, how we would like the money to be used, but um, I, I think Susan uh, will have some leeway as to how to move it around. Um, yeah. You know, it, do, it doesn't specify in the budget that it has to use, be used for Sunday, but it could be used for additional hours for some people. Um, but I think she understands our intent, although is not bound by doing it in exactly a particular way. Um, that's my understanding anyway. Thank you. Um, so I think it's sort of up to Linda, Linda, who is the second to see if she wants to also accept the amendment to the motion. Well, can I say something about it before we, oh, we sure. make change? Why, how about if we have a, a, an additional line item for uh, maybe maybe increasing the adjustments line item by thirty thousand dollars, <throat> and then Susan can allocate that money where best suited to help those lower individuals, rather than across the board increase of one percent. Well, just just to respond, I think uh, the Susan. Uh, proposing an additional 30,000, which would bring it to 60,000. So, or what you're saying, what you're suggesting, Tim, is that we have a line item for 30,000 uh, and then the 30,000 that I originally proposed. Is that what oh, you're saying? Oh, Sue, I didn't, I didn't know, Sue, I didn't know you were uh, suggesting an additional 30,000. Is that right, Sue? Well, yeah, I mean, Karen, you weren't discussing, you were talking about the raise as opposed to the Sunday hours, right? I, I was, that's how I anticipated the money would be spent, although I'm also concerned about the low hours. Uh, but I don't think the budget tells Susan exactly how she has to spend that raise money. There is 
put more money in the budget that would enable it to be used for raises or for some other purpose, but it doesn't actually say you have to use this extra money for raises. But I think she understands our intent. I do. But if, we, if we change the, the percent of raise to, from 2.3 to 3.3, then it would pretty much say across the board. Right. However, if we just had uh, an amount of money in the adjustments, then uh, Susan could uh, allocate that differently, I think. Yeah. What do you, yeah. Um, Linda, you so, so my understanding would be that uh, you intended there to be the 2.3 COLA plus Correct. an additional 1% and whether that would go to everybody dispersed evenly or if it would be a, a 1% would be a merit increase that would go to particular people higher and some particular people lower. I don't know if you want that to be flat, but then there would be an additional 30,000 that I could allocate to people that were being particularly hard hit by the reduction in Sunday hours, but that my hands weren't tied. Is that correct? Well, yeah, that's, that's, that's what Sue is saying. I was saying that we just take that $30,000 period and put it into an adjustment amount, but it, it's up to however the rest of us really want to do it. So, so. Um, so are you saying yeah. one thirty thousand? Not an additional thirty. Yeah, the original the original motion was to add a thirty thousand dollars. Sue amended that to add a second thirty thousand, making it sixty. I was talking about leaving it at the original thirty, putting it in the adjustment. Oh. So that Susan can then allocate it where she wants. I see. That, that was my suggestion. So that we did get that that one percent increase, <clears throat> but that Susan could allocate it maybe a little bit more. <clears throat> excuse me, charitably across to the lower uh, paid people. What do you guys think about that idea? Gals, I should say gal. Folks, what do you folks think about that idea? Diane. You're muted, Diane. I, just a question. Um, yeah. Okay, so everybody's going to get 30, um, a 1% increase, right, out of the 30,000. And then the other 30,000 is just as in wishes? Or what do you think? I think we have two, two amendments, two changes to the, to the initial. Okay, let's step back. The initial motion was to increase the salary by 1%, which would be approximately $30,000. Okay. Okay, that's the, that's the initial. The amendment that I believe Sue was asking for was to increase that to an additional $30,000 with that additional $30,000 be allocated towards the lower paid staff. As long as everybody gets a raise. Yeah. That, everybody. Was that, that was that amendment to that motion. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I was just saying that we also could, instead of that, and that would be $60,000. Right. I amended that or I, I threw out another idea <laughs> that instead of increasing the, the, the entire uh, everybody's salary by 1%, that we just add the $30,000 into the adjustment, and then Susan can um, allocate that where she wants. So, so really, there's two suggestions for the original motion. Um, well, I think, uh, I mean, I... I it, Sue made hers, and I accepted an amendment to that one. Okay, so that's so what I think. So I think the ball's in Linda's court to say whether or not she accepts that amendment or not. Right, and so that would be the sixty thousand altogether, thirty thousand being for everyone, and then thirty thousand meaning it could go to. Keeping it's like an offset. It's like an offset, right? You know, so that those folks don't lose money. They can right. roll it in, and plus it'll also get those lower-paid people closer to that fifteen dollars an hour. 
Is you know, if, if we can if we essentially raise their hourly rate. I think there would have to be some, um, some basis along with that, though, because I know that there's high paid positions also that came in on Sundays, you know, and I wouldn't want that to be cushioned on them when they're still working their 37 and a half in other places. I would want to make sure that that money was used so that they could still get their benefits or, you know what I mean? Um, so I wouldn't want it just because you worked on a Sunday, then you got a free ride and not, you know, had to work less hours. No, he, he, here's what I'm saying, Linda. It's and like, if you work on Sunday, you know, right now you're getting the time in hand. Okay. So, and that's been going on forever. So this is, I get my paycheck at the end of the week. I know exactly what I'm going to get. So I know how to pay my bills because this is what I'm getting. All of a sudden, Niles is going to eliminate that time and a half and they're just going to get straight pay. So all those folks that are regularly scheduled on Sunday, whether they're professional staff or they're lower staff, they're going to get their salaries cut. No, they wouldn't get their salaries cut because if you're full time, you just worked less hours for That's the correct. salary. Yeah, the full timers, it was it was time rather than money. But yeah, it's the part timers. Okay. Does that make sense to you, Sue? Yeah. So you wouldn't lose any money. You just worked a few less hours. So, and I'm not sure how many people that affects and what really it that amount is. It would be timers that worked on Sundays, basically. So I wouldn't want them to all of a sudden just get padded hours. And I, and I don't mean right. to be, I'm just no. trying to be realist. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't want them to all of a sudden have to work less because all of a sudden they worked on Sunday because we're doing this as a flat, you know, everyone on Sunday gets this benefit. That wouldn't be why I would want that. I would want that other money to go towards someone who couldn't get the hours because they only worked 20 hours and that was their time. And that, yeah, they're losing it. Or someone who was um, not being able to get their, their benefits. You know, something that really was a trying, tough hardship you know, and they would really benefit from that, you know, and I think that having that cluster of money that, and not necessarily that you'd have to use it, Susan, maybe as a, just in case, or, oh my gosh, we didn't see this coming, or, you know, I don't know. Does that make sense? Am I? Well, I mean, it's getting a little fuzzier in my mind. I mean, <laughs> I will say, I mean, I was thinking of it as a way to, um, that, that would be taking that money and it would be the opportunity to help any of the staff who's part-time staff whose hours were being drastically affected. Okay, so we're talking, um, okay, well, that clears it up with me more because you're talking part-time staff. Yeah. You know what I, yeah. if, you, if you're not pushing it over to the full-time that are already getting their salaries, then that clarifies it for me. Right. Okay, so I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, then yes, I second the motion. So could you then state what the now the motion is so that we're all clear? So then the second yeah. motion would be what Sue has has proposed. Or, <laughs> ah, you <laughs> stated. Okay, so could it be an amendment to Sue, increase the budget? Thousand, it would be one percent across the board for everyone. Right. An okay. extra one percent, so that'd be a three point three with a thirty thousand dollar bank for other employees to put to increase you know hardship and equitable you know equity you know so that i mean i guess my the bottom line and how you want to phrase it and motion it whatever is i hate to see folks that are struggling on part-time jobs you know working at the library and all of a sudden it's like you know you used to make 85 dollars a week and now you're only going to make 60 dollars a week because you're not going to get the Sunday hours or, you know, or you had this schedule and now you're not. So you're going to get that. So how can we help these folks? I mean, or do we have to just be like, okay, you know, we don't care about these long-term employees that have been so loyal and faithful to us. Yeah. I mean, to be clear, nobody's going to make money on this and there are, and people still are going to lose some money. It just offsets a little bit of it. Right. I mean, if we were looking at a budget, 
where it was like, oh my gosh, we can't even hardly pay the light bill, but we have finances. You know, we're we're all, we're a very fortunate community, and so you know, let's take care of the people that have taken care of our community. And it, we still said. come under budget from what it was last year. I'm sorry, Diane. We still. You're okay. I'm sorry. Okay. We still have under budget from what we had in 1920, and um, we're taking care of everyone. Okay, go, I think that's everything. So at this point. I mean, I, can I just say something? Uh, no, I, 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 hold on one second, Diane. But to Linda's yeah. point, with this amended motion, we are still $356,270 under last year's salaries. Just so Thank you. Thank you, Tim. I just would like to know how Susan sees this working. I mean, this could be a nightmare as far as her making the decision who gets what. I, it's, I don't know. I did that with the merit increases already, so. It's not my favorite thing, but yeah, I think I have an idea, and it certainly will be in consultation with Greg and with the supervisors. Okay, as long as you're comfortable with it, because that can be tricky. It, it, it'll be tricky, no question. It would be tricky, however, she could make her staff happy and hopefully here. Right, exactly. Carolyn's got her hand up. Did I misunderstand? I thought it was 1% straight across the board. It was amended. Oh, sorry. So now so it's current, one percent of the total, and she'll decide who gets what. It, so, so the current current motion is to increase the raise uh, to to three point three percent, which was a one percent, and to uh, <clears throat> add an additional thirty thousand dollars into the adjustments line item, so that uh, that can be used by Susan to target. Uh, individuals who might be more adversely affected by the reduction in hours. Is that to pay time and a half for Sunday then? Instead of the time and a half. That, that would be one of them. But it would be more to, up to Susan's to identify people who um, were more severely ad adversely affected. Did I state that correctly? That's how we want to do that. It's fine, thank you. Okay, uh, any more discussion on this item? This is a, this is a tough one. No. Doesn't look like it. So, um, <clears throat> uh, Susan, oh, no. you want to take a roll on that? All right, Karen. Yes. Carolyn. I'm concerned it's the taxpayers who are struggling even more. I'm yes, have no, vote yes, no. My, it's my vote. It's my statement. Yes, but we, we previously decided that all, we get to this point, it's a yes, no, abstain. We had our discussion. I, I can make a statement as no, an elected official. No, Thank no, you. No, no, no. We not, we, no, that's not our procedures. Read our procedure document, please. Next person. I don't have a vote, Carolyn. <laughs> okay, uh, Diane. Yes. Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. Tim. Yes. Sue. Yes. Carolyn. Oh no, I voted no. Okay, motion passes. So okay. just to be clear, we have a salary of 2.3 plus a 1% merit raise. So we're right back where we started. Plus well, with, with that particular thing, yes. Yes, with that piece of it. All right. Are we still on page 45 or 46? Where are we? Oh, yes, no. yeah. uh, yes, we are. So, so Carolyn, back to, your, back to that. I want to make every clear to everybody. In our, in our library, uh, board procedures document. We clearly specified that when it comes to the vote, our choices are yes, no, abstain, yes, that's it. We did that because we got into a habit of making statements when we voted, myself included. And when you do that, 
other people who have already voted, you might be giving more new information. Let everybody make all their statements that they want when we have our general discussion. Because that, that's unfair to everybody that's already voted. So, so out of respect, we have three types of votes, three responses. But if I'm an elected official, I can make a statement. That, then why didn't you bring that up when we talked about our board procedures? That's not what we agreed on. So that's it not- happens. That, It happens, it happens. Board procedures clearly state this, Carolyn. Go back and read them, please. You'd make everybody happier if you just follow our procedures. You seem to only have an issue when I make a statement, but when no, other trustees no, no, no. make a statement, you don't have nope. a problem. No, that is not true. We had somebody making a statement last time and I called him on it as well. So not as not as violently as with me, my goodness. Well you But are we on page forty five? Because I know how you want to get Yes. This yeah, we haven't yes. we're done with Sally. Oh, we're done with Sally. So now we're on library materials. Wait, I'm still on um, Library materials. On page, which page is that? 45. Oh, okay, good. Last section, third section, page 45. All right, so now, we're on library materials. Carolyn, you, you, you do that because you have a, a superpower raising my blood pressure somehow. I know how you do that. All right, uh, okay, we'll go around the table. Does anybody have any comments on our library materials? We'll start with Carolyn. Just for fun. Carolyn, you're muted. Now you're not muted. You're still muted, Carolyn. All right, we'll move on to somebody else. Diane, do you have anything on library materials? You're muted. For our benefit. Okay. No. No. Karen, do you have anything on library materials? No. Patty, do you got anything on library materials? For the most part, we're down from the from the year before, so no. Correct. We're down almost almost ten percent. Uh, Sue. I mean, a lot of it's hard to determine. You know where we're going to go. You know, Absolutely. with digital versus material. So I appreciate the best estimate you guys can give. Thumbs up. Great, Linda. You got a thumbs down. So you don't like the library materials budget? I have no no adjustments. Oh, I thought you hated the section. So I, I wasn't sure what thumbs down. Was. No, I like that um, the online databases went up because that's where we're gonna need it more. Yep. Um, I noticed that the downloadables are up a little bit and you know, it's everything seems like it was really thought out and um, processed. Uh, books, obviously, is going to go down a little bit because we're not buying as many print because we're, the kids aren't, the, or I mean patrons, I'm sorry, I can my own, we can't come in and actually get them. So I believe that this part of the budget was really well thought out and I thank you. Carolyn, we're back to you. Your, your, your um, okay, um, Susan, I, I, I hope I'm not redundant. We're talking about these library materials that you're going to need to sanitize. You're not expecting to get a response, though, right until August when that that realm uh, finishes its uh, testing. Oh, we're not we're not sanitizing books. We're quarantining them so that the virus just has time to die off. So we're not. That's no expense. It's just tying the materials up, and it's a pain in the neck, but it doesn't have an added cost. But yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I wasn't concerned about the cost. I was concerned about when the process could take place. Now, I thought, according to the trustee webinar, they, they have some organization called Realm. That is right, they do. Yes, yeah, so I've talked about that the last couple of board meetings, too. Yeah, it's the thing where they are testing out library materials with the virus to see how long the library, the virus lasts on different kinds of materials. So they don't have an answer, but They're you not found yet. out from someone else that, this works in seven days? Well, I mean, it's the, the CDC best has said that all Right. It's yeah, the more. CDC already had study results. It's just that we didn't entirely believe that they were taking seriously enough that 
library materials are handled differently, maybe from other materials. So they wanted a real life test. So this is from the CDC, is who decided now your seven days is fine? No, so, well, uh, Rails is the one. It, the CDC's recommendation was 72 hours. And Rails, is this a budget? Is this yeah, a budget thing? Not. Is this a budget thing? Can we please move forward? The, I did not want to be in this meeting all night. Well, and I think we're not paying Let's for Let's talk about budget, budget please. It's, it's, a, it's a time that the materials are not available. So we're well, not I did have a question, but you know what everybody's and screaming. Make it. Make the question. Yeah. What's your question? It's a little hard. When I Now I don't even remember what I wanted to ask her. Great. Well, Anybody else? And wait till next week at the next week's meeting. All right. Come on. <laughs> Let's move Let forward. Move on to page section four, library operating expenditures. So, anybody got anything on this little fun little section? We'll start with Carolyn. Yo, what do your notes say, Carolyn? What are your questions? Gosh, I got tons. <laughs> okay, um, I know that Greg said that there's no way we can get out of paying CCS but don't they even think they owe us a refunds and for clothes? No, they still have their expenses. And I had a CCS governing board meeting this morning. They, they're very much continuing with the work of maintaining the database and facilitating our procedures and doing all of the things that they do. We still have our catalog. Isn't are using it. Am I mistaken? Is this not for interlibrary loans? It's not, we talked about this at the last meeting. This is the thing that has our patron database and our materials database. And right. it is for borrowing, but it's how we keep track of all of our materials. Right. And, it, and as Greg's presentation said, it would cost a great deal more to withdraw from the consortium. But the consortium isn't giving money back. Question is answered. My yeah, question no. again is, it is what we use for interlibrary loans. Like if somebody wants a book from Evanston, it's done through this? That is one of the ways it's used, but it's also just used for us to keep track of who has our stuff. You know, right. if you come in and check out a book, that's how we keep okay. track Question of it. Question is answer. Okay. All right. That sounds like an answer. Yep. All right. Let's see. Um, so, and as far as library materials, is that um, chapter one or is that not in this area? Because I couldn't find it. Chapter one is a newsletter that goes out to the community. It's got nothing what to do with library materials. I didn't see that line item. Printing. Chapter one's PR. It's in the printing budget. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Printing and post. Why would you think it's a materials? Come on, let's go. Oh, you're a thrill okay. and a half. Okay, so they, you know what, Carolyn? I, I mean, I volunteered to be on this board, but I didn't volunteer to spend 15 damn hours going over the, all this little minutia. You know, God help you if you were on a real library board discussing no. a budget, you'd lose your mind. Man, you know what? I've been on library this board meetings for 15 library. years. Mute everybody. I've never mute. had something mute. like this. Unmute me. Okay, let's calm down. Everybody's a trustee. Everybody's been voted to be on this board or, or, or chosen to be on this board. All right, let's just calm down. <clears throat> um, Carolyn has her way of going through. She's, she's entitled to go through to the detail that she can. We're, we're, we will try to limit it. We will try to move it along. Um, we're, we're getting the sections that probably aren't going to have a whole lot of discussion left anyway. Um, so um, I think, I think it'll, it'll move. So Susan, could you unmute? Could you keep um, Sue muted? And could you unmute Carolyn? Ah, I saw that face. <laughs> Don't you even. <laughs> All right, Carolyn. So I apologize. Would you move forward, please? Oh, you're muted still. Sorry. Did you have something for me? I'm sorry, what was the question? I, I said I, I apologized for our, our interruptions and you can continue on with your questions. I'm finished with materials. Is that, are you moving to another section? Uh, we are on the library operating expenditures on the top of page 46. That was the section we were talking about. I'm done with that. Oh, good. Okay, great. So we're done with that section. Next section is the general and administrative. Um, 
And, I, and as that, I think we probably can move forward. Excuse me, are you going to just skip over everybody else now? I was planning on it. Go ahead, Patty. What do you have to say on that? We're lower than we were last year, so we're going down. Let's yes. Be happy. We are happy. All right. Did I skip over anybody? I'm sorry. Anybody else want to say anything on Section 4? Raise your hand. Raise, raise a finger. Okay. So we're done with that section. Section 5 is the general administrative. Let's start with Patty. Do you have anything on Section 5? We're lower than we were last year. Yes, Let's we are. Happy. Hey. We'll go to Sue. Sue? All good. Did we unmute Sue? Good. Linda, you got anything on Section 5? <laughs> okay, the thumbs down. It's a bad symbol. Okay, the thumbs down means you hate it. So, so say thumbs up. You like I've got nothing. Good. Okay, good. <laughs> Karen, you got anything on Section 5? Nope. Diane? Thumbs up. All right. Okay, nice. Carolyn, what do you got on Section 5? Anything? I have a hard time. I think I'm having a stroke right here as we speak. Um, yes. The trustee line item, oh. I think it's... Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Carolyn, stop, stop. That's my suggestion. I want to change. I make a... I'm, I'm stopping you, Carolyn. <laughs> you don't interrupt. I did. If I'm not Perfect. finished. Then you, you can... Know, but this is mine. This is Sorry, the one. I want to make a statement. No, I want to. Oh, Carolyn, let me. Carolyn, let me, let me. You can. I just want to say something. I'm not into this for glory. All right. Oh. As far as the trusty line item goes, we're not going to be doing much. I mean, I don't think there's... Oh, like Carolyn, that's what I wanted to talk about. So if we zeroed it out, I, oh. think, I think, honestly, as trustees, we should just do things locally and pay out of our own pockets. Oh. Didn't we discuss it at the last meeting? We did. That's what we were going to do. I don't know, but it's not zeroed out. And I think as trustees, we can pay our own way when we go to these chamber events. Why should the taxpayers have to pay for us to go to dinner? Why couldn't you let me talk about so it? So that's my suggestion now. You that's could my... make your motion or whatever you want to do. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 made, you, you said could, you wanted to do something. Make he a made the suggestion at the last meeting we should do that for this budget. But I'm saying no trustee line item. We don't need one next year or the year after. We should pay for our own. We don't need to be going to conferences. Make a motion. Keep talking about it. Make a motion. May I just point out that there is ALA Chicago 2021 next June, and I do think the trustees should attend the national conference when it's in Chicago. So I do think you should put some money in for that. I'm perfectly fine to reduce it, but I would, I would discourage you from completely reducing that line. That's all, right. all I have to say. Linda, you got your hand up. Yes, and if I go to represent the library at some event, I am not paying myself. So there you go, that I'm not going to go. All right, well, I'm going to make I, a motion. I agree. <laughs> so you're not making a motion. I'm going to make a motion. Oh, thank you so much. Is this vodka? <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. All right, I'm going to make a motion that we change the trustee line item from 5,000 to 3,000. Do I hear a second? I don't. I'll second. Great, Sue seconds. All right, anybody have to say anything about that? Make a friendly motion or do you wanna? Um, yep, Linda. I'm sorry, Karen. Uh, okay. Um... You know, I don't uh, oppose this, but I, I do think it'd be good for us to go to the local conference, and I'm just hoping that's enough money for people who do want to register and go to the local event. Um, I, Susan, do you remember by any chance how much uh, registration is for a trustee? I do not. It's different for different conferences, but... Yeah. yeah. Well, let's, in, in response to that, though, if we look at how much we actually spent... Uh, our, our actual was well under. Uh, yeah, but it got canceled this year. It, I mean, oh, it, that's it, right, it did. We it never did. spent close to the, our level of, of $5,000. Yeah, that's true. Right, so just saying it. Uh, Carolyn, got your hand up. I have a question. If we go to a trustee event and we pay for it, isn't it deductible on our taxes because it's part of our, our position? No. Uh, you have to ask a lawyer. 
It's not? No. no? Well, right. Diamond would know. Okay. All right. All right. Anybody? All right, Diane. So do we have to vote on that or no? We do as soon as we hear from Diane. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. I just get unmuted. Um, yeah, no, I agree with Linda. If I'm representing the library, I don't think I should pay for it. And also, this is a publicity, uh, publicity thing, and this is part of our um, job, really, as a board member, and this is to promote the library. So, no. <laughs> no, I don't think we should um, bring it down to zero. As a matter of fact, I think just leaving it as it is, we're talking nickels and dimes at this point. Okay, the motion on the board is to change the I'm done. Trustee. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> so the board can just can vote against it. I don't really care. Um, um, so let's just have a, 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 a um, call on the votes there, Susan. All right. Um, where are we? Okay, Karen. Um, yes, I, I will uh, vote in favor of this. Yeah, and let me reiterate that the motion at this time is to reduce the trustee line from $5,000 to $3,000. Okay, so Karen is yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? No. Patty. Yes. Linda. So it's reducing five thousand to three thousand. I just want to make sure. Yes. Um. No. Tim. Yes. Sue. Oh. Can't hear you, Sue. Muted. I'm sorry. In this time and with all of no, 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 know, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes. No. Okay. Yes. I would say um, I do not want to change it. No. Thank you. Be careful. So we have four yeses and three noes. The motion passes. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Can I, uh, before you move on? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Um, Susan, um, consultants, I think you told me once that was all technology. Is that what that it, is? It's not all technology, um, and I, I, uh, but, it, but it, that is usually a very high percentage of it, yes. I don't uh, frankly remember now off the top of my head what's in there right now. I, I have a question. Do we have the same things taken care of every year in technology? Is that, we kind of carry the same number every year. So is it the same service? We just get it every year by some outsider? Is that what we do in that department? I'm going to ask Greg to answer that. Oh, thanks. So um, some things are recurring. For example, the, uh, the charges for housing the website uh, go in that account. And that's a recurring charge. Uh, what Rich also does is he puts um, he puts fees in there for large uh, jobs that he's working on. For example, uh, this year uh, he had an amount in there for the um, uh, for the new servers and the new switches. Um, so it's it's those types of things where. You know, he needs to bring in a little extra muscle in order to get something done and to get, you know, some of his uh, other work done. All right. I, um, I thought it was reoccurring, but I see, I remember we voted on that. All right. Well, I if, it. If, uh, my initial comments were that our website uh, firm that houses the, uh, that houses the external website is paid from that account. So that is recurring, but it's not all of it. All right. All right, thank you.
Okay. One last one. Subscriptions and dues. Is that 11,000? I wrote all over it. Yeah. 11, 443. Okay. Yeah. So, so those are, all right. It says subscriptions and dues. Those are memberships. Those are things like the, the library's membership in the Chamber of Commerce. Um, it is also individual librarians. Uh, the board has paid for their ALA dues as well, ALA and ILA. Oh, so we pay for that before we go to a conference? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, become a, it's a membership in the professional association. There are more people taking advantage of it this year than there have been in the past. I'm not sure why. Okay, but. great. Thank you for that. That's all I have. Nice. Did I miss anybody? No? Great. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, section six, vehicle operation. Anybody got anything to say about vehicle operation? No? Okay. Going once, going twice. Number seven. Uh, employee fringe benefits, it's clearly based on uh, what our salaries are, so I, I don't think there's anything we can do on it, but I'm not making a call. Anybody want to say anything about uh, employee fringe? Uh, Patty, no. Linda, no. Looks like no. Diane, no. Karen, Carolyn, and I. No, I already asked, Greg. Thanks. Oh, Greg, you're welcome. Uh, utilities is the next one. Uh, just shout out if you have anything. Uh, capital expenditures, number nine. Uh, we did already discuss um, at, a pre at previous board meetings our um, capital expenditures. Um, and really this meeting is not the one to reopen our discussion about whether or not we should do capital expenditures. That has been previously decided. But uh, has anybody got any questions on those? Um, just the numbers. Yes, Carolyn. I, I do have a question. Um, I think um, capital expenditures policies part of the of Greg's presentation. Um, it said. It said something about the budget is based. The, oh, background material from the strategic plan and the capital plan are integral parts of the budget. Now, we did not discuss or vote on any parts of that capital plan. So how is that part of the budget? Remember, we were going to meet and discuss it, and then we decided we're not. But yet we've used something we didn't even review and approve as part of the budget. Well, if you remember... Um Budget items are not necessarily, especially the capital, <clears throat> nothing here is decided as to whether or not it's actually spent. It is just a, a placeholder for monies that may be spent when the board decides if the expenditures happen. So we did have a review of all our capital expenditures and uh, that was presented to the board. Um, I, right, I don't remember if we actually made a, 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 an actual vote on it, but it is, it is money that's planned, but not necessarily um, um, that the board has has decided yes or not to spend. Okay. So, right. And just it's, another uh, question: the portion of <clears throat> capital that's part of this budget, it's is it additional or is it something we're pulling out of that capital projects? Special reserves. It's the capital it's projects it's, special reserves. Right? So there's nothing new. No. Okay. I don't right. remember. I'm, the I'm, I'm just right. Right. There's not. There's nothing new. This is a rollover, basically, from last year. Yeah. So um, a lot of the, a lot of the things on there, the bulk of them, I think, are uh, items that we talked about before or have budgeted before. Okay. I didn't recall the security system door or something like that, but it was already part of the other. Fine. It's all good. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anybody else on capital expenditures? We lost Diane. Yeah. All right. Um, so I, I think um, <clears throat> let the liability insurance and Social Security and workers' comp unemployment. I think we can 
um, just bundle that all together. Anybody got any comments on that? Those those sections, I mean, they're pretty straightforward. That's that's basically salary stuff. <clears throat> okay, going once, going twice, nothing. And uh, our last section is our building uh, and equipment maintenance, uh, which we've got our COVID line. You know, it's a, uh, a slight decrease from last year, but we got our COVID line, COVID cleaning line out of there. Um, any uh, any comments on this one? Anybody? No, Karen says no. Patty has her hand up. Yes, Patty. Yeah, the only thing I see pertaining to the COVID line earlier in the page, page or pages, it said thirty thousand. Here it says twenty. It's two Unless separate I'm things. It's two separate things, Patty. One is one is personal protective equipment like gloves and masks and mm -hmm. and so forth. And this um, this line item for twenty thousand is in case we have uh, a COVID event, I'll call it, in the library, and we have to we have to bring somebody in to do deep cleaning. Okay. Okay. Make and, and we don't expect it to be twenty thousand dollars per event, but um, we wanted to have enough in there so if it happened more than once, we could handle it. Okay. Thank you for that. All right, Linda, anything on this one? No, Sue, anything on this one? No, Karen, anything on this one? Nope, Diane? No. no. Uh, Carolyn, anything on this last item? No. No. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much. I think we've concluded our discussion on the budget. And uh, now, <clears throat> I will entertain a motion that's going to be a modified budget for our changes. All right, I move that the Library Board of Trustees uh, adopt Ordinance 20 02, uh, ordinance providing uh, for budget and appropriations of the Niles Main District Library, Cook County, Illinois for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020 and ending June 30th, 2021. You want to say as modified? As modified. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. So Pam moved and Diane second. Is that correct? Thank you. All right, Susan, please take the roll. Karen. Yes. Yeah. Carolyn. Yes. This is to approve the budget? The tentative ordinance, yes. I have a question. This is called a tentative ordinance. Does that mean next week or ne at the next board meeting I can't ask questions because you're done with this? We're finished? No, no. I, so the board has occasionally made uh, changes to the budget after the tentative, tentative ordinance was passed. It's not passed until it's the final one. But it's up to the uh, board president whether he puts it on the agenda to discuss it. Oh, up to me. I see. All right, motions on the table. We need a, a, a vote. In the midst of this pandemic, I'm stunned that we haven't even taken. Carolyn, Carolyn, yes, no, abstain, pass. This is a disgrace. Absolutely no. Carolyn, thank you. Just Diane. yes. Thank you. And it's frozen. Diane's no, getting thumbs up. Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. Kim. Yes. Yes. Sue Wilsey. Yeah. All right. All right. Motion passes. Motion passes. Thank you all. All right. Uh, uh, if there's not any other, which. Uh, I don't think there should be. Thank you, Greg and Susan, for Thank obviously so an enormously, tremendously amount of work. I mean, <laughs> your presentation is beautiful, and I appreciate the award-winning aspects that you guys do. 
I've never seen a library budget, any budget, so well presented. Thank you. Greg. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to Greg for the budget, but Susan, thanks for all your hard work. You tried to cut those numbers and cried, and then oh, everything just got you crazy, but thank you both. Thank you very thank you. much. Okay. Thank you. Motion to adjourn? Yes, motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Karen, second is? Second. Okay. What is Raise your yes. hand. Yes. 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 All well, right. Yay. Everybody have a great week. Okay. See you all next week. We've got another meeting. Oh, um, yes. That's all, folks. Hey. Bye. Uh, and then oh, before you all leave, bye, y'all. Okay. Thanks. No, what? What were you going to say? I was going to say we're going to have to schedule a, um, a special board meeting to um, – review proposals for the roof, uh, proposals from attack, um, um, contractors for the roof. So I'll send an email. Okay. Okay, good night, everyone.